share the YouTube uh, link with me so that I can post it on Facebook. Yeah. Share the... Did you receive it? Yeah. Uh, yes, I received it. So, Mr. V. S. Sharma will be joining at four o'clock. Okay. In the mean, in the meantime, we can get started gradually. So I think it's 3.30 so already, so yeah. yeah, you can get started. So uh, good afternoon and a warm welcome to all the panelists and the attendees who have joined us today, as well as people watching on our live stream on YouTube. We would like to welcome you all to our 47th webinar titled uh, Casting and Rolling Technology Day, organized by Steel and Metallurgy. A warm welcome to our gold sponsor, Schaeffler, and our steel sponsors, Danieli and Gender Steel and Power. I will now uh, introduce the panelists for today. Is my screen visible? Yes. So our first panelist, our keynote speaker for today is Mr. Via Sharma, he's the Managing Director, Jindal Steel and Power Limited. Mm, just a second. Right. Then we have Mr. Manohar Singh. He's an uh, application engineer, raw materials for Schaeffler India and Asia Pacific. Uh, Mr. Devashish Mishra, executive vice president, quality management, PDQC, JSW Steel Limited. Uh, Mr. Andrea Di Luca, vice president, micromill technology, Danieli. Mr. Shantanu Rudro, uh, associate vice president, casting and rolling, Danieli India Limited. Mr. NS Sharma, GM in charge, wire rod mill, RINL, Vishakapatnam Steel Plant. Mr. GC Raut, Senior Vice President, Rolling Mill, Electrotherm. So these are our panelists for today. Uh, before we proceed, there are just uh, a few short guidelines for smooth platform management. So for all the attendees who have joined us on Zoom to listen to our discussion, we have a Q&A section in Zoom, which can be accessed by both panelists and the attendees. So I would request you to post your questions and queries in the Q&A section, and then the panelists can choose to answer it live or directly in the chat. I would also request all the panelists to keep their microphones muted when the others are speaking to avoid any kind of nice feedback. Last but not the least, I would request everyone to adhere to the time limit as given in the program to avoid any delays. Today's, uh, today's webinar will be moderated by Mr. Nirmalia Mukherjee, uh, Editor of Steel and Metallurgy, and on behalf of Steel and Metallurgy and our sponsors, I would like to welcome you all to our webinar today. Um, so we will now have the national anthem, followed by which there will be a corporate video display session by our sponsors. So I would uh, now request you all to please rise for the national anthem. जन गण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जय 
जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे Now yes, we have the, people, go ahead. Yeah. The, now we have now we will have the corporate video, video uh, videos by our sponsors. So our first video is by Shakur India. What makes a product perfect? The perfect machine and the brightest minds. At Scheffler, great sourcing, product development and manufacturing come together right from the start. That's why we construct our own product lines where we design, develop, implement, deliver and supervise them worldwide. Our tailor-made machines enable precise manufacturing processes which produce superior products. At Scheffler, our creativity, ideas, and the vision to excel make us one Scheffler with one promise to deliver products made by Scheffler for our customers worldwide. Our four production hubs in India are the perfect examples of this state-of-the-art technology and global production systems, which cater to the demands across the automotive and industrial customers around the world. Scheffler India also operates one of the largest industrial manufacturing hubs in the region, for the region. Located in the city of Vadodara in Gujarat, one of India's largest states, Manija and Savli are two sophisticated production plants that manufacture a wide range of industrial products and systems. Both production plants are equipped with our custom-made high-precision machines based on German technology. Managed by a highly experienced team of engineers and operators, these plants produce quality products that consistently meet and even exceed customer expectations. The plant in Manisha has been serving industrial customers across the world for around six decades and is pivotal to the development of Scheffler's footprint in the region. This plant is a key regional supplier of best-in-class industrial products and solutions, such as spherical roller bearings, cylindrical roller bearings, tapered roller bearings, and wheel set bearings to various industries, including the railways. India's second industrial plant, located in Savli, is best known for its stringent quality control and sophisticated processes. From heat treatment, grinding and honing of the inner and outer rings of roller bearings to their assemblies, all processes are performed with utmost precision and safety. The deep groove ball bearings and large size bearings, known for their reliability in critical applications across sectors, are produced at the Savli plant. Quality testing for products manufactured in India are as stringent as those performed in Germany. To ensure highest quality standards consistently throughout the production process, regular and rigorous quality checks are performed at various production points. Scheffler India is also constantly reviewing and perfecting its production processes to achieve optimal operational efficiency. Apart from producing high quality products, Scheffler India production plants also drive the entire procurement, production and logistic chain, ensuring delivery of quality products to customers all over the world. Innovation and manufacturing excellence are the lifeblood of Scheffler. Combining the expertise of industry professionals and the acumen of our business partners, we enhance the competitiveness of our customers and pioneer motion for the industry of the future.
Uh, next, we have a video by Jinda Steel and Power. And uh, last but not the least, we have a corporate video by Danieli.
Thank you, Ankit. Thank you for, and thanks to our sponsors, Shafrar India, General Steel and Power, and Daneli for making this uh, webinar possible. Our special thanks to all our uh, uh, panelists who are with us today, uh, starting from Mr. Via Sharma, who is joining shortly, Mr. Manohar Singh from Shafrar India, Mr. Devashish Mishra from JSW. Uh, Mr. Andrea Di Luca Chantanu has a problem. He is a Wi Fi, he is in US right now. And in US, his uh, uh, issue is Wi Fi connectivity is, is not working in US early morning. So he may join a little later. He has some connectivity issues. Thank you, Mr. Chantanu Rudro, a very good friend of mine. Uh, who is associate vice president? In, thank you, uh, thank Ghana you, India. A very close friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, uh, thanks to Mr. N. S. Sharma uh, from RINL. Now RINL is one plant which is very close to my heart, and uh, I consider uh, RINL as my second home. So uh, it's great to have uh, Mr. N. S. Sharma, and also thanks to uh, Mr. Saxena Dio. Uh, Director of Station, Mr. Saxena has nominated Mr. Uh, Sharma. So special thanks to uh, Mr. Saxena as well. And uh, Mr. G.C. Rao, Senior Vice President, Rolling Mills from Electrotherm India, who uh, uh, Electrotherm, as you know, uh, was the first to uh, proceed with the Atma Nirbhar Bharat initiative and uh, locally produce uh, the equipments which is available in India today for the, I would say the entire full liner. Almost Thank you, sir. Liner. Yeah, especially those uh, uh, with the induction furnace and electric arc furnace route, no elect electrotherm very well. Thank so, you. So uh, with that, uh, we'll uh, get started right now. And it's almost 10 to four. So in another 10 minutes, but before that, uh, before we uh, get started, uh, let me uh, I request Ankit to just uh, highlight and speak a few words about our next big physical conference that we are doing in Mumbai in November, which is Mitech India. Those of you who are aware, Mitech is the largest ex exhibition on planet Earth for the metallurgical in equipment industry. And uh, for the first time, we are holding Mitech in India. Uh, Mitek is held every four years in Germany in Dusseldorf. Next year it will be held uh, in the month of June in the city of Dusseldorf once again. But before that, this year, to celebrate Azadika Amrit Mahotsav, 75 years of our uh, independence, we will be celebrating with Mitek India for the first time in Mumbai. And Ankit, if you could just uh, highlight uh, the gamut of speakers we have right from CMD of RINL. Uh, Mr. Atul Bhatt, to Dr. Mukesh Kumar, Director SRTMI, Mr. Anirban Das Gupta, Director in Charge of Bilai Steel Plant, Mr. Anil Kumar Choudhury, who was earlier the Chairman of Sale, and now the Group CEO of SR um, my, uh, Minerals and Metals Group, Mr. Ravi Singh, uh, who is the CEO of Sulb Steel Plant in Bahrain, Mr. Wim Van Gerwen, Wim is uh, the COO, of Asalamitaal Nippon Steel in India. Mr. D.K. Mohanty is Director of Production of LMDC. Mr. Ulrik Griner Pactor is the uh, uh, CEO of uh, SMS India. And Mr. Manoranjan Ram is from Daneli India. Mr. Pramod Sagar is the Managing Director of RHI India. Mr. Sami Nagpal, whom I needs a special mention because they're the title sponsor for this event. Mr. Sami Nagpal, is the uh, CEO and MD of uh, Dalmia Bharat Refractories. Mr. Ishmohan Garg, CEO of Calderis India. Mr. Manish Beriwala, Managing uh, and Director uh, of Sham Steel. Uh, and Mr. Rahul Yenurkar is uh, from Wellspun Group, he's the CTO. And Mr. Anil Anand, who's the CEO of SMS India. And we are going to give award a special uh, uh, Lifetime Achievement Award to the chairman and the managing uh, board uh, CEO of SMS Group, Mr. Bukhar Daman. 
global head of SMS globally. So he has been kind enough to uh, come down to India during that time to receive our uh, award, uh, uh, which is a lifetime achievement award you are bestowing on Mr. Daman. So thank you, Ankit. So this is uh, the event where we would like to invite uh, one and all from the industry to come and join us. And uh, to get further details, please send us an email uh on the contact details um, i can just share with you uh, you can send a mail to either kamala k a m a l a kamala at steelmetallurgy.com or you can send it to pradipta p r a d i p t a pradipta at steelmetallurgy.com and of course you can always send it to our gmail id steel and metallurgy at gmail.com so with that we will now move on to uh, our first speaker and our lead sponsor for today from Shaffler India, Mr. Manohar Singh, Application Engineer, Raw Materials in Shaffler India and Asia Pacific. So over to you, Mr. Manohar Singh, the floor is yours. And okay. as they say, nothing moves without the bearing. So uh, to keep the steel industry moving around, keep the steel industry rolling, we need your, uh, you need your, your bearings to make our steel production possible. So we Thank start you. with, <coughs> we start rolling from you. Over to you. Thank you. I think Manohar, what the best you can do is you can just open your presentation and then start sharing. Uh, you can close all, uh, you can just open the presentation first and then, then use the share screen option. Then it will be easier for you. You can close other windows. You can just open the presentation. So, uh, so what I'll do is I'll uh, stop the sharing now. And what you can do is you can click on share again. And instead of sharing the entire screen, you uh, click on the presentation. Uh, it should be there under basic. If your presentation is open, it should show up in one of the boxes. So you click on the mm -hmm. PowerPoint box. Okay. Okay. So let me uh, take this opportunity to welcome my good friend, Mr. Andrea Vilupa. Uh, who was uh, having a, a difficult time connecting with the hotel Wi-Fi. So I'm happy that you have been able to connect. And a good morning to you. Uh, you woke up very early. And a, a buongiorno and a warm welcome uh, to this webinar. And you've always been an inspiration for all of us. And I know you're an early riser. You get up early, you mentioned. You get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. So... Uh, Hope you have enjoyed a good cup of Italian coffee and uh, you're ready to keep us moving today. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Mukherjee. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. So over to you, uh, Manohar, you can go ahead. Uh, you can just click on the hide icon so that you know this. Yeah, now you can go ahead. Yeah. You're not audible, uh, no, you're not audible. Uh, I don't know if you're muted. Try and see if you're un. Yeah. Yeah, now go to the full screen mode. Oh, yeah, that should be fine. Yeah, please move. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ankit, can you check? Uh, yeah, Manohar seems to be muted even now. Uh, no, he is, he is unmuted now. Okay, but I can't hear him. Maybe his microphone is off from his end. Oh, yeah. yeah, try, please try without the uh, headphone, without the microphone. You can use the system microphone. Uh, yeah, or maybe you can click on the speaker icon uh, where it says you're sharing screen. Uh, so it says that it, it has been disabled. So maybe that will enable the screen sharing. Okay, I'll try to uh, disable your computer audio in, in so that we can maybe hear you. Can you just check if this works? Uh, can you unmute now? No, I think it's... Um, Mr. Singh, can you hear us now? And, and uh, are you able to unmute now? Yes. Am I audible? Okay. Yes. Yeah, now, now you're you're audible. Audible. So, so um, I think what happened was uh, your computer or when your computer audio is active, the microphone is being disabled. Um, so I, I don't know a solution to that, but what we can try is instead of clicking on desktop one, you click on PowerPoint when you share, maybe that might fix the problem. So when you click on share screen, you will have multiple boxes. It will say desktop one or desktop, and then you'll have whiteboard, and then you'll have uh, Microsoft PowerPoint if it's open already. So uh, the Microsoft PowerPoint must be open in the background. So. What shall I do? I shall I uh, share entire screen? Uh, no, you go to the share screen and then don't click on entire screen. Click on Microsoft PowerPoint. Microsoft, okay. PowerPoint. So you basically open PowerPoint. Uh, there is no option for PowerPoint here. So is the PowerPoint window, uh, window already open in your uh, computer? Yes, yes. Then window? Uh, yes, so if it is open, then it should uh, ideally show up in your share screen. You are not checked on No. No. Let me first start by sharing interest. 
Is my screen visible? Uh, yes. yes. It is. You just uh, now it's okay. Now it's Am I yes, audible? Yes. Now yeah. we can also hear yeah, you. Just, so yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, just, just, just click on the hide uh, icon and then it should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Now go ahead. Yeah, perfect. go ahead, please. Perfect. Please go ahead. So hello everyone. I welcome you all in this session. My name is Manohar Singh and I'm working as an application engineer. So let's start the presentation. Um, so agenda is, we will start introduction with a small overview of steel manufacturing with respect to bearings. Then we will explain the few features about the um, special product uh, developed for caster and rolling mill application. And we'll, we'll end the presentation with Schaeffler lifetime solution. So let's start the presentation. If you see the steel manufacturing uh, with respect to bearing, a variety of bearings are used in the steel manufacturing um, uh, from smaller size to mid size and larger size. But 50% of the bearings used in the steel manufacturing are tailor made and 50% are approximately in standard catalog products. So today we, we, are, we will be co covering caster and the rolling. Let's go to the caster section. So <clears throat> way back, Schaeffler had has initiated with the COCAP program. COCAP start, um, stands for continuous caster bearing under which we have developed a lot of variety of product uh, used in the caster application. So if you see the caster application, it starts from the ladder trade. We have a variety of products like spherical plane bearing, needle roller bearing, SRBs, CRBs, sealed SRVs and CRVs, split roller bearings, and water cooled housing. So we will, in the coming slides, uh, I will explain about the uh, few products developed for caster application. So for the, let's start with the lateral turret arm. So application environment is such that oscillatory motion is there. Then there is huge loads, angular misalignment, shock loads are there. So we have special product developed for this. In this, there is a special layer of PTFE or GF, GFK plus PTFE layer. So by this, uh, these bearings are maintenance free. Uh, th these bearings are lubricated for the lifetime. And in line to that, we have also have a algo glide layer, which can sustain a temperature up to 150 degrees Celsius. So coming to the uh, stands, uh, we have a specially designed SRBs. The basic feature of this SRB is like uh, I, I have pasted one, one of the drawing of the this bearing. You can see that only static load carrying capacity of the bearing is mentioned. Dynamic load rating is missing. This is rarest of the rarest event. Reason being the application speed is so slow. It's uh, almost from one to three RPM. So these bearings are not uh, failed by the classical fatigue. Instead, these bearings are failed by the wear. So what we have done is we have uh, given the special profile, special curvature on the uh, uh, rolling element so that static load carrying capacity and the wear resistance of the bearing can be increased. So, and since RPM is so low, so we, we have not uh, manufactured these bearing with the uh, strict tolerances. So as a result, uh, these bearings are cheaper than the standard catalog product. And we, I, I mean, we have passed on that benefit to our end customers. So next is uh, COCAP CRB. In, uh, in caster application, as we know, the temperature is too high. So there is thermal elongation of the shaft in this direction, longitudinal direction. So one bearing must be fixed. That is generally SRB. And the floating bearing is CRB. We have given a special profile to this uh, bearing also. So as a result, it can not only the elongation, it also there is uh, elastic deformation. So to, to accommodate that, we have given a special profile to the rolling elements. It can accommodate eight, almost eight minutes of angular alignment, which is sufficient for caster application. Uh, apart from that, we have also a special coating on the surface. Uh, so that these bearings can be protected against corrosion and there is a lot of water in the caster application. Similarly, we have also the sealed bearing range. Earlier, we were just supplying the sealed SRPs, but now we also have uh, sealed CRB in our portfolio. The we have not compromised on the capability uh, of uh, this bearing. Uh, 
uh, it means that uh, all the features which are available with the open wearing is also available with the uh, sealed as um, crp and uh, additional feature is these bearings are uh, greased for lifetime now let's move on to the rolling mill section uh, first of all the application environment uh, if you see the rolling uh, ro ro rolling mills the uh, operating environment is very aggressive uh, with respect to bearings extreme loads are there very high speeds are there water is continuously flowing there lot of contamination scale dirt with uh, high temperature is there so in gen in general most of the time the general configuration is four high or uh, six high mill and the basic uh, configuration is in the work roll bearing there there is four row trb for radial load and uh, two row trb for thrust load similarly for backup roll backup roll bearing configuration generally there is four four row crb for the radial load and two row of uh, thrust bearing for uh, axial load so now we we have a very vast variety of uh, four row trbs like uh, with uh, seals without seals with uh, uh, spiral grooves without grooves cylindrical tapered inch inch bearing metric bearings and uh, we also have recently developed d1 version in which there is no spacer in the in inner ring or co cone of the bearing so uh, in the coming slides i will uh, I will explain about the few products which has been developed by Schaeffler uh, for uh, roll neck bearings. First of all, uh, uh, in roll neck application, the raceway of the bearing should have uh, high hardness uh, so that it can uh, protect it can protect the bearing from wear. At the same time, the surface of the bearing should be ductile so that. Uh, uh, due to contamination or the um, cycling of uh, weared out particle from the bearing itself, uh, it should not initiate the crack and uh, that crack should not propagate. So with this special material, we are getting something like this microstructure. For normal carburized bearing, as we can see that there is precipitation of carbides on, in the grain boundaries and with needle, needle shape. But with, with the developed material, there is no precipitation of carbide uh, um, carbides on the grain boundaries at the same time these carbides are in spread shape so so by by uh, having special material and the special heat treatment like carbon nitriding uh, the compressive stress is also but this is the surface and it is the depth from the surface so we can see that the compressive stress on the surface is also on the higher side it means the higher will be the compressive stress higher will be the resistance of the bearing uh, to protect against the fatigue so when this bearing tested and actually on the field at customer side we have observed from the past that uh, the life of these bearings are almost twice than the standard carburized bearing next uh, is the next feature we also can add is x life x life is nothing but the uh, improving the internal geometry of the bearing in x life we have improved the surface finish of the bearing as a result the, the peak and valleys we have uh, is lessened so load carrying capacity of bearing has been almost increased by 20% 20% uh, increase in dynamic load rating has resulted into 70% increase in life moreover we have also improved the profile like during high loads generally the edge stressing case were coming but in this newly developed profile there is no we can avoid all those uh, things we have also optimized the rib contact as we know that the in rolling element the on the surface there will be rolling friction but between the ribs and the rolling element face there will be sliding friction so we have also optimized this so overall when we have developed this uh, this x life the fric friction generation friction losses or heat generation inside the bearing is very less and the next feature is seal trb uh, in seal trb although we can also we can save 80% of 80% uh, reduction in the grease consumption as compared to the open bearing but the major point is uh, it is saving the bearing from the contamination. To see the uh, impact of contamination on a bearing, let's take an example. This is the normal sand grains. 
suppose in case the bearing is having a life of 100 100 hours so due to the impact of sand particle only itself it is coming up to 5 this is a logarithmic chart so due to contamination sand type of particle contamination itself there will be 95% reduction in the bearing life so we can now see um, can feel the the impact of contamination on bearing life it's huge and contamination drastically uh, decrease the bearing life so in all if we see the, this is the current current standard product if we use this special mercandur uh, material product the life can be doubled and if we will add x life it will be better and x life seal it will be far better so as compared to the simple uh, standard bearing um, these the cost of these bearing is marginally higher but performance wise they are far far superior than the standard product overall these all these product we, which we have developed uh, uh, are with the thinking that we should be uh, targeting the total cost of ownership i think buying a product to buying cost is a cost but the, the during the whole life cycle what total impact is coming on the cost coming on the bearing is more important with view of that only we have cellular lifetime solution manufacturing a good bearing is uh, okay it's good but uh, until and unless that bearing is mounted properly it will not give the good life so we have a a vast range of uh, mounting tools like uh, mechanical thermal hydraulic uh, we have uh, alignment tool laser alignment tool we have our own lubrication uh, uh, lubric uh, premium lubrication application specific lubricant uh, uh, known as arcanols we have a vast range of conditioning monitoring uh, equipment uh, uh, so that we can check and monitor the health of bearing and for customized large size bearing to reduce the co2 uh, we also have remanufacturing re, uh, re services in india also and for that uh, also we have technical supports technical support mounting supports um, uh, failure analysis all this support point is uh, uh, we we want to support the whole we have a complete package uh, to support the overall lifetime of this uh, whatever product we are offering we can support the entire life cycle and we have all the we want ke to keep your machine rolling and with 0% uh, so that our customer can get the uh, best output and have a sustainable business thank you any questions Thank you, Mr. Singh. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 sir. Yeah, uh, it was an excellent presentation because you touched upon very key uh, issues, which uh, uh, you know we keep referring to. One is decarbonization effort. One is to reduce the energy consumption, uh, improve the life cycle cost of the bearing, and uh, uh, none other than the managing director of JSPL, Mr. Dhir Sharma, is listening to you. So you, he knows how to save his bearing cost now. He knows where, where all uh, you know. He can charge you in, in case your bearing fails, and uh, how effect, how effectively you know. Uh, yesterday I was reading a report where uh, the you know uh, CAG has pulled up two plants. One of course uh, being RINL, uh, you know for. Basically, not being able to manage the uh, enhance the productivity of their blast furnaces. So I think uh, it's a good time for all our steel makers to look at uh, energy saving. You know, the idea why I chose to go for this webinar on casting and rolling is you know the basic concept. Where if you remember, uh, endless casting and rolling was not there twenty more than twenty years ago. So it, it developed more between the eighties and nineties. Uh, and let's say it settled after the 90s. Uh, there, the main uh, advantage of using endless casting and rolling process was basically to save the energy cost. So I think there, uh, uh, you know, your shaft bearings have 
uh, especially you know the seal bearings also where uh, you need to have a perfect con condition monitoring in place to see the life of the bearings and how are they are performing so with that uh, uh, any questions ankit can you see any questions for uh, uh, manohar to uh, which manohar can answer okay so i can uh, see any questions in the q and a section also so let me take this opportunity to thank manohar and uh, let me also welcome our keynote speaker for today uh, a warm welcome sharma saab mr vijay sharma managing director of uh, general steel and power and whom uh, the industry uh, always believes is our uh, path breaker and uh, he shows and leads the path uh in fact uh, those of you who have read uh, his economic times uh, column with regard to what uh, the feeling was about about the super cycle coming to an end mr vijay sharma gave, gave a very optimistic uh, answer to that so may i welcome mr vijay sharma our keynote speaker managing director of jspl sharma saab not hard once again sharma saab can you hear us can you hear us sharma saab i think he is muted ankit he is muted right um <clears throat> yeah yeah so i'll uh, yeah i think he is not there yet perhaps he has logged in but okay may, maybe he is not in front of the computer yeah okay so uh, we will wait for mr sharma to join but i suppose we should be joining any moment now in the meantime i just take a comment from mr devashish mishra mr devashish mishra is executive vice president quality management at jsw steel uh, mr mishra uh, once again namaskar warm namaskar to you and uh, very good afternoon uh, you, and very good afternoon to all uh, good afternoon mr mishra are you in dolvi or are you in vijayanagar i am based in vijayanagar you are in vijayanagar oh great so uh, you know uh, uh, in fact uh, uh, the contribution of vijayanagar with regard to the last and uh, my dada you know mr jain tacharya dmd of your uh, company deputy managing director mr jain tacharya he was there uh, in in vijayanagar a couple of days ago so yeah, days, he, days. you must have had a brainstorming session so yeah. What, what, according to you, uh, uh, Mr. Mishra, what do you think? Uh, you know, is the way forward? Uh, is it because Sajan? I remember Sajan Ji, uh, the last meeting uh, I saw him discussing about uh, uh, this uh, RVD ESP concept. You know, endless uh, casting and rolling. Uh, this was something of interest to Sajan Ji. So. what do you think are the pros and cons why one should uh, or should not choose endless uh, casting and rolling uh, in order to reduce energy cost enhance productivity speed up uh, productivity what 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 according to you is a right way forward see uh, one way is uh, today uh, when you are looking at the conventional casting so conventional casting is uh, you know it is well established and uh, based on different market segments and there are many products which we are able to produce by conventional castings followed by the thermomechanical rolling that is one point but the second point is definitely when you are looking for the continuous slab uh, i mean the the csp process and rolling so definitely there is a advantage of uh, yield there is a advantage of productivity you can set the plant at a very uh, reasonable capex and opex but apart from this i feel today the most important is it will be a source for drive towards the green energy or green steel productions so that is a new chapter coming up because 
most of the plant who are having uh, the csv process they are coming up with the ea process also the preferable will be the ea process so the combinations of ea process and the csv process is going to play a major role because of the net co2 emission so i think there is a good scope and we should have a lot of uh, i mean kind of r and d process in line so that uh, the kind of fears we are having for the uh, different kind of product which we need to produce through the csp process and uh, the the kind of uh, uh, what do you say that is the uh, operational stability required so that once one process will stop then the whole uh, production process will stop so that is another fear which need to uh, get away and uh, for that you we need to have a, a strong r and d strong process control so that is one part the second part is definitely uh, now the world is moving towards as you told the arvedi handless casting and more than that the twin drum casting and uh, twin drum castings a uh, few uh, months before i was going through it i am having a chat with mr mapatra who is dealing with this and uh, i understood very uh, few interesting uh, notes also because this twin drum casting if i understood so twin drum casting you can able to produce from 0.8 to 2 mm and it is a you can uh, capture a reasonable market you can capture some market in hr where the your ra value is around 1.1 so the ra is between the cr product and in between the hr product so you can capture uh, a good market in this and you can produce hr po galvanize product uh, along with the thin hr which is a uh, which is in very much demand today for different pv applications and uh, definitely the energy consumption is less and uh, there are a lot of applications for this so i think uh, the focus will be now along with the uh, conventional steel making uh, we should do more research and uh, we should work for more stability towards the operational practices for the uh, csp process through ea and also for this new technology yeah mr mishra yeah. ha ah, thank you mr mishra you, you are absolutely right now uh, uh, from a long product uh, plant point of view may i request mr nsh sharma to share his thoughts what should be the approach in a long product unit in a you know uh, we been uh, are uh, hearing about development in high speed wire rod mills so in a long product uh, what kind of approach do you think uh, a wire rod mill should ideally have in terms of uh, creating more energy efficient energy saving uh, reducing your carbon footprint in the days ahead tell me mukherjee garo oh namaskar namaskar all my panel uh, panelists and august uh, audience first of all i will thank you for giving me opportunity the technologies in wire rods as you see when 90s when the first wire rod bill of the latest state of art was uh, sub, uh, installed in vizag steel it with a high speed of 76 meters per second and afterwards we have seen a 110 meters per second steel uh, wire rod mill in uh, our own premises and we had I had opportunity to work with both of them the much uh, things have not uh, come as it means there was a progress in like of whatever loose ends were there they have been uh, attended but what we are seeing right now is we have to bring down the conversion cost of the material to bring down the conversion cost of the material our techno economical factors should have should be improved basically the yield, yield has been increased number two specific heat and power consumption uh, consumption 
which are the main say for our conversion cost they have to be brought down so right now today the level of automation in all the wire rod mills have come to a better uh, platform so right now and we are picking up lot of data and we have the luxury of having memory data memory storages and everything so with this we need to have a different approach and we should use the latest digital uh, digitalization like industry 4.0 we should focus on ai and machine learning and we should speak about what we want is we should be more going towards the prediction in wrm wisax steel also what we have done is those points of specific power consumption and all we have given it to the operator and he is able to see what the power he is consuming consuming also at a given point of time similarly your heat heat consumption with this predictive analysis we can go for we are also having lot of uh, what is called is data coming from our uh, what is called condition monitoring equipment and all so temperatures and everything we can do one thing is predictability of failure preempt preempt the failure and rate the stop it rather than creating a breakdown that is should be the approach so we need to go towards a more of Uh, uh means uh, plus should be going for displacement in the wire rod mills because already in the mechanical plant we are going for a higher speed the technology remaining same in pmp and all and we need to have more number of algorithms also because we know we tap our income uh, what is called is input chemistry and from the uh, what is called is uh, bloom stage and we know our mill setup we should be able to predict what is the outcome of the grade and what we are doing and we have done in our wire rod mill that what will be the end grade when we are producing rolling at this time so this uh, technology has to go in a big way and more numbers of mathematical uh, models and algorithms i am so looking forward thank you any questions sir yeah no no you you will have your turn once again because yes. this was just yes. a preliminary because you uh, are normally uh, you know your speaking slot is coming up mr mishra is also coming up so we are just uh, primarily a preliminary discussion before uh, mr vya sharma takes over so i understand mr vya sharma will be joining very soon because i just got a message from his executive assistant that he is joining uh, very soon uh, so uh, uh, can you check ankit if mr sharma has already joined or he is joining so he is he is here in the panel but uh, he's muted okay still still muted yeah. yeah yeah okay so i'll just take a uh, uh, comment from mr diluka andrea diluka and uh, from shantanu uh, so mr uh, diluka uh, once again bonjourno and let me just share a small thought with you uh, your previous coo mr alzeta uh who is now not in the company anymore but uh, mr alzeta uh, i asked mr alzeta once that why is that you know my first visit uh to a wardol mill uh, supplier or a producer which had a legacy of their family history was a company called morgan morgan which is based uh, very close from uh, boston in us in a place called ooster which was one hour drive from boston and i happened to be there in 1997 25 years ago so 25 years ago when i went to morgan uh, morgan uh, you know was advertising and advertising in a big way that their uh, wire rod mill uh, had already performed at 110 meters per second and it was a big uh, you know achievement for them at that point of time i asked mr alzeta why is that from say the late 90s to early 20s almost last 20 years there has been uh, a little 2 meters here 3 meters there we have not uh, been able to come from a 110 meter per second mill to let's say 200 meters per second mill so there has been very little development in the last 20 years in high speed wire rod mill so would you like to comment on this why is that it took so long for the high speed wire rod mills to develop their speed uh, to a level which can be considered as very high achievement 
Okay, thank you and uh, hello everybody again. Thank you for the question. Uh, actually, there are a couple of questions that uh, are very, very interesting. But uh, regarding the, the, the high speed way road, uh, listen, I, I was starting uh, to research uh, the high speed uh, rolling of way road in 1995, so 20, 27 years ago. And at the time, yes, we were talking about 110 meters per second, but actually the reliable speed was 90, 95. Okay. After uh, and uh, typically the, the 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 life of the um, loop layer was very very short. I remember it was something 500, 1,000 tons, uh, and then they have to stop and change the loop layer. Since that time, I think uh, we, we make uh, very, very big pr progress, uh, in fact. Uh, and uh, the maximum speed we reached uh, was uh, in, in the few years 130, 132 meters per, per second after Daniele performed in, in the plants as the maximum speed. And uh, an average a reliable speed up to 115, 120 is now Common. So let, let, let me say, uh, Mr. Nemaya, that actually we did some progress. Okay. And those progress were coming from uh, typically the, 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 the mainly from the shape of the, of the loop layer, uh, which we develop uh, uh, according with the, the, uh, with the University of Udine. We research a new path to reduce uh, the, the, the peak stresses, so to enhance the life. We patent the, um, the, 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 the bearing, hydraulic uh, bearings, the oil film bearings, which uh, remove the limits of vibration given by the air. So actually we did a lot of, a lot of progress. But now we are approaching a very, a very, very limiting speed because of the energy we have to transfer from the road, from the way road to the to the, the loop layer. And this, uh, I think, uh, we will require a lot of research to to reach uh, to exceed 130 meters per second. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Diloka. Shantanu, would you like to add anything to this? Uh, regarding uh, this uh, thin sap casting and rolling, this, yes, it is a very interesting subject uh, because uh, I heard uh, from uh, Mr. Mr. Sir and also from you, you are talking about uh, only CSP and uh, ESP. Uh, because CSP now is a is a patented name for SMS and ESP is a patented name for Primetal. Okay, both yeah, both and, have uh, different. What, what, both is, what have, is the brand? What is the brand name for uh, Danieli? Danieli, we called it QSP, but we have now because you know Danieli uh, R and D uh, that department team is uh, doing their research and development on this thin sub and casting rolling since two thousand fifteen and sixteen. And uh, for that, that is the result. If you see the last uh, uh, six years uh, uh, order value worldwide, so you can find uh, that total 10 orders have been achieved, uh, have been ordered. And in 10 orders, Danieli has got seven orders. Two orders go, gone to Parimetal and one order, one order goes to, uh, goes to SMS, that is S3I Sinton, and Parimetal, one in China and one in USA, and we have seven orders and you know also that uh, in new core gallatin that what is that that the csp pilot plant that we have changed recently from csp to qsp and uh, that because that what i can tell you that uh, csp is a okay it, uh, when it came in 18 it, 1985 that time it is a really good technology because nobody can think about that uh, from liquid steel we can produce that hrc coil because uh, that that term, that that is a good technology but after that uh, that uh, danieli also started that same time that this technology but they have uh, spent lot of uh, time and lot of uh, you can say that money for developing this technology uh, in such a way that both 
your whatever you are getting in csp and whatever you are getting in esp you can go get in in one mid and that is the result our daniel universal nls plant has come so now in worldwide that we have supplied we have already in shagang jingtang our daniel universal nls is going on what mr sahib is telling that energy consumption uh, for csp and esp because in esp you know there is i am not uh, criticizing anybody's technology because it is also good because uh, i am proud to say that when esp technology uh, invented that time i was in the engineering of uh, primate uh, siemens vi and i was working with engineering team in linz so i know that uh, very well that uh, technology that uh, what is there because that time they are developing so uh, i am not criticizing anybody but that is also a good technology esp and the step production because uh, that low carbon steel 0.8 nobody can think in horsefish mill we can produce but uh, that is possible in endless steel production but okay apart from sms csp and uh, the uh, primordial esp so danieli has not stopped so they have invented the danieli universal endless which is a combination of csp and esp means that csp is your you can say batch mode and esp is the endless mode batch mode means from one slab one coil and endless means until and unless liquid steel is there in the mold uh, in tandish that is continuously making the coil and before down coil there will be a high speed shear and it will cut accordingly and coiling is producing so danieli is punch this two technology in their danieli universal endless technology and that succeeded fast in shagang jintang and last 3 years we are develop that mill is continuously running and we are proud to say that shagang jintang nowadays producing more 2.5 and below means 0.8 up to 0.8 90% of their product mix in this shagang jintang plant so so this is this is the new because this is a new technology new technology means you can go for the batch mode also coil to coil because you know that some grades are there which grades cannot be produced in the endless mode and some grades the lower thickness cannot be produced in the csp so that is the reason we have com we combined both the both technology and make danieli universal endless and with single stand we have given now 2.76 million ton in new core gelatin and recently you also know that new core west virginia also uh, give gave us one new uh, uh, qsp due plant in their oh, west virginia yeah. plant that is biggest with in worldwide 2134 mm width and uh, your production is 2.76 million ton so so now we are not sitting that okay we have invented a good technology okay now it is it is uh, we are selling boom boom it is going sell everywhere we are going but we are not sitting idle we are now continuously developing and now we are thinking that whether it is possible from single stand we can produce up to 4.4 or 4.2 million ton and that is also we are now thinking how to produce that in on single stand how it is put because previously when that things are casting rolling games that time we think only 50 to 70 mm slab thickness but nowadays nowadays we are now going up to 110 120 and recently that new core gelatin we are giving 140 mm slab thickness and now we are thinking about 160 mm slab thickness in uh, synthetic casting rolling and this is not now thing this is now you can say that medium uh, casting uh, uh, casting and loading it is not thin so okay i will i will highlight definitely i will highlight in my presentation what is the latest, latest uh, generation we are uh, we are developing in this thin sub casting loading technology and that is the uh, our you, know, you can say that uh, uh, usp that we are getting last 10 orders we are getting seven and our uh, uh, competitors are getting two and one Uh, from worldwide this uh, thin sub casting rolling and uh, that yeah. whatever the conventional hot sub mill now we are talking about conventional hot sub mill to qsp whether it can replace the conventional hsm or not that uh, what um, devashish sir is saying yes this is also possible now but okay if you go in the volume wise that means more than 5 million ton that is not possible now in thin sub i am talking about now because maybe in future maybe after one two years is it, it is also possible if that is also we are we are thinking that how to possible that one 
so that so that conventional hot sip mill can be replaced by thin sip casting molding. But the grade wise, grade wise, I am telling now in Newcore West Virginia, which recently we have signed, we have signed their auto body exposed gate and also also your ultra low carbon gate in that contract. So that will be commissioned in two thousand twenty four. Thank you, Shantanu. Thank you so much. You uh, gave us a lot of inputs with regard to KSP, and uh, definitely it has proved to be successful. And uh, let me tell you, uh, uh, I know for a fact, uh, you know, when the journey started with the order in Vasundhara by Daneli, yes, uh, yes, which was which was uh, one of a kind because during the peak of the pandemic, that order, yes. the entire order was executed uh, absolutely remotely. So exactly. uh, that paved the way for the really success story towards uh, uh, successful run in this part of the world. Exactly. And yes. uh, uh, we will take that forward during your presentation and Mr. G. Lucas' yes, yes, presentation yes. as well. Yes, and yes. in the meantime, uh, uh, Mr. Sharma, uh, Ankit, can you check if Mr. Sharma uh, is still there? Uh, uh, Pradipta, if you could just uh, check with uh, Srikant, if Mr. Sharma is joining again. Just check with him and let me know. In the meantime, what we will do is, without wasting much of time because we are getting delayed, so what we will do is we will request our next speaker, Mr. Devashish Mishra, uh, Executive Vice President, Quality Management, PDQC at JSW Steel uh, in Vijayanagar, to uh, move ahead with his thoughts and share his thoughts with us. Uh, Mr. Mishra, over to you uh, before Mr. V. R. Sharma uh, joins. So you can uh, go ahead and once Mr. V. R. Sharma is there, after you, he can join us. He will be addressing us. So over to you, Mr. Mishra. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mukherjee. And uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon to all. And uh, my congratulations to the steel and metallurgy uh, for organizing this webinar, which is uh, casting and uh, rolling technology. I will say this is in a very right time because the emphasis is, emphasis is on the uh, technology like thin slab casting and rolling. The endless uh, rolling of bar and rods, all new technologies like, uh, as Mr. Santan was talking, the ESP uh, twin drum casting. This is not only to increase the yield and productivity with low capex or low opex, but it will also help us in driving towards the uh, green steel technology. If we will look around the world today, the uh, economics and the industry sectors, uh, all are undergoing a transformations, right? And the urgency of addressing the climate change for meeting the, price, uh, the uh, Paris Agreement goal is becoming very, very challenging. And uh, steel industries is going to play a major role because as we all know, uh, you will look at the global CO2 emission, the contribution of uh, steel industry is around 8%, whereas in India it is 12%. So, uh, India is also in line with it, and uh, our plan is to uh, reduce the CO2 emission, net CO2 emission by 60% by 2050. So that will be 1.17 ton of CO2 uh, per uh, ton of crude steel. And the plan is uh, to have uh, zero uh, emission, net emission by 2070. So, uh, the European nations, they are moving very fast. Even they are net zero, they had decided by 2050. And uh, the plan is to reduce 55% by 2030. So with, uh, this is the kind of challenges we are having in front of the steel sector today. So what people are doing now, what industries are doing, we are adapting two technology. One is how to enhance our existing technology, that is the blast furnace and BOF route. What we are trying to do here, we are um, improving our beneficiation so that there will be less co-conjunction in our furnaces. 
we are increasing our uh, scrap consumption and uh, whatever dri we are producing we are used trying to use hydrocarbons and uh, maybe trying to generate more and more pci injections in our furnaces what is the second thought process now the second thought process is uh, now people are moving to the ef furnace when someone is moving to the ef furnace definitely the apart from the conventional casting the um, thin slab castings and the new technology esp or the advanced um, casting process are coming as a preferable choice only thing here we need to understand the challenges and once uh, we will understand the challenges based on the coming market scenario then we are having a good scope for implementing or for going towards the endless casting what mr santan was talking or going more produce high volume csp so these are the technologies we are going to have looking when we will look forward so i am having a few uh, interesting um, uh, data with me for example when you are going through the csp route so uh, the conversion cost will be less by 17% and when esp route it will be 35% as compared to the conventional process uh, also it will simplify or shorten the production cycle where our conventional process it is 4 to 5 hours where in the esp process i understood it is around uh, 10 minutes or less than 10 minutes similarly the energy saving you will see the energy saving uh, uh, there is a reduction in energy consumption by 30% and co2 emission by 40% also there will be a reduction in the investment cost for the same capacity by 30% so we know all these benefits are there and along with some intangible benefits are also there like you can increase your productivity you can increase your casting speed your roll consumption will be less uh, the maintenance of the reheating furnace will be less the scale generation will be less by this and uh, you don't have to keep slab i mean keeping your inventory at the WIP is a um, cost for the industry. So you don't have to keep slack. And when you charge the material hot, your energy congestion will be less. So there are a lot of inherent advantage of the CSP process. And uh, you will look, will go a step forward. As I was talking, and I was talking to one of my friends, about the uh, that is the twin role production of ultra thin uh, cast strip uh, i hope uh, in nuclear uh, i think they are having two plants uh, supplied by prime metal and it is running successfully so uh, the gauge when we say the gwt the great width thickness matrix you know they are producing around 0.8 to 2 mm with a width of 1000 to 1600 and strength of 1700 MPa. It means uh, uh, you can replace partially some of the application of CR product. So that is, that is a good advantage of it. And along with the energy consumption is very, very less. It is less than half. And uh, you will get a RA value in this product around 1.1, which is between HR and CR. So that can be taken into uh, different applications, PV applications, and also we can able to produce HR, PO, and galvanized product. So, uh, but we have to see how mass scale, when you are going for volume, how this kind of technology can be developed. So that is that will be one of the challenges which will be in front of us. So, along with this, if I will uh, move to the market scenario today in uh, across the world and in India. So, what are the challenges? Though this kind of process improve the yield and it will be a good path 
for moving towards the green steam and it will have less energy, less power consumption. But there are definitely certain challenges are there in front of us. So uh, let us discuss what will be the kind of product we are going to have by 2030. That is more important because when you are setting your technology, you have to understand the market requirement. So that is very, very important. So as we know, today the global steel production is around 1950 ton, million ton. Uh, and uh, the CAGR is around, th around 3% and India it is around 120 million. million. Uh, and today you will see the uh, export data, then India is a net, net exporter of uh, steel and uh, the forex we had again in 2021 is about uh, 54,000 crores. While we will look behind in 2016, uh, we had lost a, the forex of around 40,000 crores. It means the kind of steel we are going to supply to the market today, it's, it is all going to be value added product and it will go to the next market. So let us capture this one point. Now coming to our country, our per capita consumption is going to increase from 70 kg to around 230 to 40 kg. That is in the rural urban area. And in rural area also, it is going to increase from 19.5 to 38. It means there is a huge scope. So where will be this scope? This scope will be mostly in the infra and construction. It will be more than 50% you will mix all flat and long product. In automotive, it will be more than 10%. Uh, the pipe line pipe and uh, the other uh, uh, pipe and tubes, it will be around 10% and machinery, it will be around 15% or plus. In energy sector, we are going to have 10%. And coming to the uh, JSW, you will see today we are 27 million ton in India. And uh, 6 million ton we are producing is long product and 21 million ton we are producing is flat product. Out of this 21 million ton, we are having uh, 5.1 million ton through the CSP route. It means around 24% to 25% we are producing through CSP route in our Dolby plant and in our BPSL plant. Now, let us understand practically what is the challenges. Though from Mr. Santanu, I was I had understood that any kind of product, people are saying any kind of product you will able to produce through this uh, CSP route. But practically, we are interacting every day with our uh, plant team. And we understood that producing low carbon steel is the right choice. You can maintain your productivity and you can produce the low carbon steel for uh, general applications. Also, we can able to produce, you know, the uh, structural steel, but then there is a restriction of carbon. So when we restrict the carbon to achieve the strength, we have to add ferrol. I mean, the uh, we have to add, uh, say, niobium, or we have to add the, the strengthening element, niobium, titanium, or this element. So the ferrol cost goes on increasing, where in conventional process, we are able to produce a steel with a ferrol cost of say 1,500 rupees. I have to spend 2,000 rupees here. So, you know, the yield factor is getting compensated somewhere. So this is one area we need to work. How we will be able to produce peritectic grade without fear in CSP. So that is one point we need to note it. And uh, of course, um, our R&D team and all are working towards that also. But in this, we also need the supplier to handle the producer and uh, move ahead to produce these uh, kind of steels. That is, that is very, very important. That is one part. Now coming to the point two, uh, please remember uh, when in the conventional process, your cast structure is having 220 to 350 
here we are having the car structure or 50 mm to 80 mm right and this car structure metallurgically we are going to achieve all the metallurgical properties with this car structure so the reduction when you are going to produce thick plate for line pipe more than 10 mm or 12 mm which required the sub zero temperature is really a challenge in this so perhaps in this is one area we need to work in the esp or csp process though i understood my friends told in nuker they are producing but uh, the kind of product the kind of dwtt will we get here uh, is a uh, uh, little different though i understood uh, the csp process the temperature uniformity and the mechanical property is more better because the across this lab the temperature is uniform so that is one area we need to look into and mr santanu now told uh, the ultra low carbon where the surface criticality is very very important for the automotive so with such a high casting speed we need to work together how to maintain the cleanliness of steel how to maintain the mold level fluctuation and the cleanliness of steel the last point is we should have a that is of course the uh, the industry the op the operating team the plant need to do uh, to have a very discipline and uh, robust operating systems where the unforeseen breakdown should be minimum so that your line will not stop for a long time in the right path of production so with this i will uh, yeah i will uh, conclude my speech thank you for your uh, patience listening and thank you very much after 5 minutes blog ek ek speaker ko le lijiye yeah mukherjee ji any point yeah uh, thank you mishra ji thank you so much you highlighted the you know core issues quite very well and uh, in fact uh, i'm sure mr sharma must have heard up at least a part of what you mentioned uh, with regard to yes, namla ji yes i have, i have heard it and a warm welcome to you sharma sir namaskar and a warm namaskar. welcome to mr vr sharma uh, whom i always keep referring as our uh, leader and our uh, you know path breaker who leads the path Thank and uh, i was uh, sharma sir while uh, you were away i was discussing about your economic times column where you mentioned uh, uh, you know how uh, the negativity is killing us uh, the super cycle may have moved away from us but still uh, we are on a much uh, stronger path than we used to be than uh, our peers across the world and uh, your uh, you know positivity is what keeps us going and it always invariably turns out to be true though you say you are not an astrologer but whatever you predict uh, is always uh, turns out to be you know uh, the bible uh, the gita or all of us uh, thank, you. Thank, you so thank you thank you so much thank you thank you so much so without uh, mother further ado i would request mr vr sharma our keynote speaker uh, to share his thoughts i was referring to esp i was referring to <laughs> why we should not have endless casting and rolling in terms of our saving in, in terms of energy cost increasing our productivity uh, increasing our yield uh, so i'm sure uh, you have your thoughts to spare on uh, what is the way forward in terms of savings after which i will request uh, mr andrea di luca uh, andrea did you have breakfast not not yet but uh, it's not a problem no i i, I don't want you to miss the american no, breakfast no, no, no. so uh, just don't worry, don't worry. a little time because after mr vr sharma it will be uh, you know you should you should always listen to your customer what he has to say especially when it comes to mr vr sharma who has immense knowledge on what the future has in store for us both Thank in terms you. of choosing the right route and uh, you know uh mr mishra you mentioned just now about uh you know the uh, the electric arc furnace route and how it could uh, possibly the way uh, be the way forward the iaf route uh, i'm sure mr sharma also has uh, 
a lot of uh, these issues uh, to address and uh, without further delay uh, the floor is yours sharma sir uh, over Thank to you. mr vr sharma our keynote speaker for today and followed by andrea di luca over to you sharma sir yeah thank you uh, good afternoon and uh, good morning to uh, many people those who are connected from overseas and uh, good evening to people those who are in southeast asia so uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, as a great platform i always love talking to uh, steel and metallurgy platforms and in last 3 uh, years uh, this is i think more than Uh, 30 40 times we have already met 40, spoken uh, 40 out of 47 sharma sir i think you must have been there at, in at least 40 of them because, yeah yeah uh, you know 40, because i yeah. the first person yeah. whom i always request is mr vr sharma before thank anyone you. else before requesting thank anyone you. thank you for the regards you have and uh, this is a, a very good uh, subject chosen casting and rolling technology uh, for the day and uh, rightly said by previous speakers that the time is come to find out uh, uh, the technologies where we can reduce the steel consumption in tons but we can increase the steel consumption in kilometers so this is what the demand of the day because the whole world speaks about co2 emission whole world speaks about uh, esg issues whole world speaks about uh, environmental and uh, Uh, and uh, 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 overall issues in terms of climate change so uh, the best thing is first of all we have to find out how can we reduce the co2 emission uh, by way of conserving the energy because everybody speaks that how to capture the co2 how to utilize the co2 uh, but most of the people they often forget that uh, the first step is that how can we conserve the energy or how can we reduce the energy consumption that is the most important so the new casting and uh, rolling technologies are uh, wonderful technologies in the world today uh, thanks to the new generation rolling mills uh, designed and developed by uh, many of the mill suppliers uh, in the world and uh, they have focused their designs on reduction in overall energy consumptions be it uh, 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 be it uh, uh, gas, be it electricity, uh, be it uh, electricity in the rolling mills. Uh, so this is a wonderful uh, drive uh, taken by people. Now it has become far more important today, uh, though it was not understood uh, in so years, so many years in past, uh, in that uh, fashion. Uh, after having uh, the the shortage of gas in Europe. Uh, and also the electricity shortage in europe and uh, now it has become far more important uh, that uh, these technologies should be adopted you know, by uh, most of the mills and if they don't then they'll be phased out in the world one more thing i'd like to tell like uh, we are discussing esp or high speed delivery rolling mills uh, so you know these are uh, the mills which are uh, going to make the future for next two decades and uh, next two decades i would say uh, the high strength low alloy steel uh, the thermal uh, thermomechanical quenching uh, in terms of material available we, we have and also the rolling technologies be it esp be it dua or be it uh, 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 the the um, the new version uh, of uh, thin slab uh, rolling by sms Uh, and uh, there are uh, more people those who are coming uh, in the narrow widths so that uh, you can produce uh, 0.8 mm 0.9 mm uh, uh, thickness of uh, hot roll coils uh, new core they they had a technology uh, uh, a special technology where they could go in 0.6 uh, some of the uh, two or three mills new core technology they have uh, they have put up so far uh, and these were not so successful but i'm sure in times to come they will be in a position to roll 0.6 mm of hot rod coils comfortably uh, at a affordable price and affordable uh, uh, op operations so these are the developments taking place and uh, i'm sure uh, these uh, technologies these developments are going to help uh, uh, the the consumers uh, in a in a bigger way so today if you see Uh, 0.8 mm 1 mm 1.2 mm uh, these thicknesses from the hot strip mills especially the esp or especially the dua uh, or 
uh, um, uh, SMS uh, design uh, where they have the thin slab casting and rolling. So uh, the the these technologies have uh, I would say replaced most of the uh, material which was being produced through the conventional hot strip mill. Uh, with uh, the similarly in uh, rolling mills, the long products. And now, for example, the high speed delivery earlier, we used to have 28 meter per second per stream. So total 56 meters, then it was 30, then 35, 40, 48. Now 52 to 55 meters per second with the high speed delivery. This is something, you know, uh, is, a, is, a, is an excellent uh, move. Now a combination line, a continuous line uh, where most of the uh, mills, mill suppliers uh, three are the major, SMS, uh, Denali, and Prime Metal. Uh, uh, all three, they have now developed uh, uh, the continuous casting come rolling technology. So this is also a wonderful technology. No need of any reheating furnace. Again, saving in terms of uh, power. And any saving in terms of power or electricity, that means there is a direct uh, saving uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, ESG issues, or I would say, in CO2 reduction. So this is what uh, happening. Uh, now the next uh, technological changes or advancement we are going to face in world uh, in future. Uh, I think by G7 or G20 countries, one day they will take a decision that no more uh, seaborne coal cargoes. Imagine, imagine if there is no coal movement in the oceans and it is banned, then what will happen? So the countries, those who are dependent on coking coal from Australia, from Colombia, from South Africa, from America, from Russia, or New Zealand, or Indonesia, their blast furnace will come to halt. It will stop. What will happen to the steel industry at that time? Uh, God forbid this happens, but this is going to happen. That is also I'm telling. Because it is not the steel industry alone who is uh, who is doing uh, the CO2 emission or who is damaging the climate. It is basically the mines where from the coal is coming. If you control that coal, if you stop those mines and you ask them that you produce you you use your coal within your country, then you know seaborne cargoes of coking coal or thermal coal will stop. The moment thermal coal and coking coal seaborne cargoes are stopped, then what will happen to the blast furnaces? What will happen to the thermal power plants? You can imagine. Now, my, my statement may be uh, looking a very, uh, I would say, uh, very unrealistic today, but this is going to happen. This is bound to happen because the way the climatic issues are there in the world, uh, the European countries, uh, the developed world, the G20 countries, they will stop using uh, the blast furnaces uh, maybe by uh, 2030 or maybe 2035. And then the pressure will come on the developing countries or developed countries, uh, those who are financially uh, or still uh, business developed countries like, um, like China or, uh, or India or uh, tomorrow Korea or Indonesia that don't, they will not get the coal. These, all these mills will not get the coal. What will happen? When they, you don't get coal and the, there's no cocoa plant, no uh, blast furnaces running on coal, then only the situation will be controlled. So in such a situation, you imagine, just imagine, I'm not saying this is happening tomorrow, maybe in 2035, 2040 or 2045 or 2050, maybe, because the world is, Moving from moving away from coal and going to uh, uh, to different technologies, different uh, 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 power generation or hydrogen generation uh, uh, mediums. So we have to prepare ourselves. The technology uh, suppliers, the researchers, designers will have to consider this thing: that how can we sustain and survive without coal? Uh, maybe by 2050 or 2045 or 2040 and maybe tomorrow. So better that we start discussing today. When we start discussing today that after five years or 10 years, there'll be no coking coal available, then what is the answer? 
or if the world body they decide that okay you have coal in your country okay you damage your environment why do you send this coal to america why do you send this coal to europe why do you send this coal to japan you put up your own blast furnaces in your country and then run the plant and then give the finished steel to us or the semi finished steel to us so this is likely to happen it cannot that you keep on sending the coal that one side the coal coal bearing countries or the people those who are doing the mining they enjoy the the revenue and uh, they damage the uh, the environment of a different country so i think they will invite blast furnaces to come and put up the blast furnace in australia or colombia or in america or in south africa or in indonesia or any other cooking coal people or any other thermal coal people so this is one what will happen to india at that time if such a situation comes then in india the situation will be uh, situation will be very simple situation will be at that time that you have the you don't have uh, uh, cooking coal you have thermal coal so a uh, better you use your thermal coal thermal coal but you will not get the cooking coal when you don't get cooking coal then what will happen the answer is what the answer is that we have to convert this thermal coal into hydrogen so coal to hydrogen one then we have to convert this coal to uh, gas and then gas to dri and uh, uh, then uh, we we can think that okay partly syn gas partly the uh, hydrogen and uh, partly the local available coal the cooking coal in india which is about 20 to 30 million ton uh, we can take out uh, that will be used in the blast furnaces for next 10 to 15 years time uh, but for sure after 2045 there will be no blast furnace in this country uh, like uh, after 2035 there will be no blast furnace in uh, europe and there will be no blast furnace in america after 2030 and after 2030 32 the blast furnaces in in europe will not be existing similarly the blast furnaces in uh, uh, in uh, japan will not be existing after 2035 and so is in korea only two countries will have the blast furnaces one is china and the other is uh, india china is very rapidly changing they have taken a decision that 200 million ton they will produce through electric arc furnaces in times to come uh, if they are quite successful in this then they will take a decision that by 2045 will phase out all of the blast furnaces from the world and they then the what will be the feed stock you cannot get the feed stock of so much of uh, uh, iron ore and uh, sorry the the scrap in the world so the feed stock is only dri hbi now where from the dri hbi will come the people those who have the natural gas and the people those who have the coal and they can produce the uh, equivalent to natural gas that is syn gas and this is gas they will be uh, producing dri hbi and be exporting to china china will not be a net importer of iron ore in future china will be importer of hbi dri and they will produce their own dri also because they are producing today the world largest or the the quantity of hydrogen is being produced by china china has done last year 70 million ton of uh, total hydrogen and out of the 70 million ton about 70% is produced through coal about 10 to 15% is produced through natural gas and through solar or through green energy it is only 1% they have a plan that by 2030 they will uh, produce at least 10% through solar or wind and still the 60% will come from coal so china's policies are very clear and we appreciate that they have shown the part to the world so coming back on the technology part that in future we have to find out what is the alternate to the blast furnaces this is one what will happen if the cooking coal movement through the sea bound cooking coal movement is stopped so we have to prepare ourselves what will happen when there is no scrap available today the total scrap in the world is 450 million so out of this 450 million the people those the sea bound scrap is about 200 million balance is consumed with the respective countries because most of the countries today they have banned the export of scrap so uh, they they consume within their country the scrap is a very hot commodity today in terms of the environment issues and this is going to be in future also so uh, as per the projections available by wsa the scrap production by 2040 will be about 650 to 680 million tons say about 700 million ton so where from the balance 800 to 900 million ton will come 
the world will not reach to 2.5 billion ton of uh, steel uh, because world will come to a theory of consume less in terms of tonnage but consume more in terms of length so high high strength steel will be a uh, will be uh, a product uh, which will go into the uh, into the industry uh, today we produce 1.9 billion ton of steel this will come down to maybe 1.5 1.6 billion tons uh, but in kilometer wise and this will be more than the current uh, uh, production so the casting and rolling technology they play a very significant role uh, in times to come so the researchers developer uh, the, the r and d people the equipment suppliers uh, the consultants those who are sitting here in this particular conference uh, they have a great future uh, if they start discussing you know, on these issues so these are some of my points i am sure uh, you you will like it and you will start pondering upon that uh, uh, worldwide the blast furnaces will come to a halt say by 2040 to 2045 so these are the 2025 years time so thank you very much nebala so that's all these are my views to you today thank you thank you so much sharma sir thank you so much and uh, let me also take this opportunity to announce that uh, uh, mr sharma has been mentioning about the use of uh, gasifiers uh, and uh, very soon you may see a technology being developed by jspl uh, to sell the sell the gasifiers uh, from their own portfolio so gasification technology will be provided to the steel makers uh, by jspl directly which i think uh, uh, all the uh, you know gri uh, technology providers like daniely or uh, midrex or hyl uh, tenova they can uh, sell it to the world through the help of jspl which will develop because as you know lurgi technology is now outdated not available anymore for uh, the gasification for the gasifiers so the gasifier technology is a brain child developed by mr v r sharma to sell it to the world and uh, jspl is developing their own technology which it can patent and sell it to the world so yeah, Nimala, uh, sorry i will i will tell you one more i'll give one more news uh, the uh, couple of the japanese companies are in our contact they want us to put up the hbi plants in india or anywhere in the world they say that uh, in next 5 years time the iron ore uh, uh, as iron ore will not be imported in our country because of the dust pollution so japanese government has already taken a decision that no more iron ore import so this means they can only import either the uh, pellets or they can import the hbi so i asked them that what will you do with the hbi you don't have electric arc furnaces they say that there is a transition time we will be changing to electric, switching over to electric arc furnace in next 10 years time but till that till that time we will be uh, mixing 60% pellets and 40% hbi in the blast furnaces so this is a new new concept uh, what the japanese blast furnace people Uh, they have given to us they are day in day night they are now working with the indian suppliers if you can produce hbi for us not dri because dri is in in loose form they do not want to damage their ports and they do not want to create a dust pollution the moment the, and similar thinking is with the uh, with koreans so koreans are already working uh, with a com- with two companies in malaysia so malaysia already antara steel they have a hbi plant so now it is supplying 100% material to korea and one more uh, hbi plant is coming uh, uh, in in the in, in one of the island there uh, in uh, in uh, malaysia not philippines sorry malaysia so this particular labuan there is a place called labuan l a b u a n labuan so labuan is a part of malaysia it's an island there is a gas available there so they are also putting now more dri uh, sorry hbi plants so that they can supply to korea so the purpose here is that how to reduce the uh, iron ore consumption how to stop import of iron ore as iron ore because it is a mother earth like that and finally it creates dust pollution and the uh, the yield is very low because when you transport iron ore so 1 or 2% it goes into sea then about 2 to 3% goes into the into the air pollution then 3 to 4 maybe 5% goes because the undersize 
because the fraction size is like that. So the total net to net 7% is the loss. So what they are telling that it is better to pay a little more money and take HBI, which is already a reduction has already taken place. It is a reduced uh, r and or and then we use it in our uh, uh, blast furnaces so that we can redu uh, reduce the coke consumption. Uh, the, their, their target is that we want to bring down the coke consumption by uh, a maximum 200 kg per ton of hot metal. So 200 kg per ton of hot metal as against 480 kg today, that means they have to reduce by 280 kg. So let us say about 80 to 100 kg will go into through PCI. So 200 plus 100. So let us say total 300. So 300 kg as against 480 kg. So if they reduce 180 kg of coke, then very surprisingly, as per the calculation available, because the coke one will also go phased out, they will be reducing their overall footprint by 0.7 ton of CO2 per ton of making steel. If today they are doing in 2.3 or 2.4 ton, this will come down to 1.7 ton. And this is where the game is. So what I'm telling to all of our listeners, please start working on these technologies. These are part of casting and rolling technology because unless you have the steel, you cannot do casting. And unless you have the cast, you, you have the steel uh, or cast material, you cannot roll it. So casting and te rolling technology, tomorrow the mills will be designed not as casting and rolling. Mill will be design, designed as CRM. That is casting, rolling mills together. That is tomorrow. Today it is reheating furnaces. Reheating furnaces will be phased out from the world. So over to you, Nimala. Uh, thank you, Sarman Sab. I think this is what uh, precisely we were discussing, uh, uh, you know, since the afternoon today, that the integration of uh, casting and rolling. I would prefer to call it casting and rolling management, because the casting and rolling management can only be done because the plants have to be more flexible. Uh, as uh, Sharma Saab was mentioning, uh, we need to basically reduce uh, the uh, weight of our coils. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I, we need ultra light uh, steel auto body kind of product where the, the weight of the coil will be less, but the length will be more. So we need a better uh, you know, uh, physical and chemical properties which can enhance the elongation, the strength, uh, and uh, in order to do that, you, we need to be more flexible units. You know, uh, the market demand also is very dynamic; it is changing from time to time. So, to move up with that, I think uh, Andrea, you can, uh, you know, share your thoughts and the thoughts of the Navy as far as looking at the markets of tomorrow are concerned. So uh, what uh, Mr. Sharma just mentioned, if you could just uh, you know, share your thought on the way forward uh, before you know, uh, we adopt the technologies of tomorrow, what is it that we should keep in mind? So over to you, Andrea Di Luca, uh, Executive Vice President of the Navy. Mr. Andrea Di Luca. Thank you. Over to Thank you. I'm sorry, I had to. I'm sorry, I had to keep you waiting, and you're hungry. Your breakfast uh, is waiting for you. So no. over to you before you move no, for your breakfast. Is, yeah. Early no, morning. Thank you. US. Thank you for. Thank you for this question. So, which city in US are you in right now? I am in the um, east part of uh, the US. East part. So so no, okay, not. Uh, uh, east part means near Pittsburgh. Close. Yes. Yes. Close to yes. Okay. So thank you and thank you to Mr. Sharma for the very very clear picture of where uh, where uh, where uh, we are. Um, actually, actually, we, we in Daniel we, we understood uh, this need uh, in the last uh, at the end of the last century, and uh, we start uh, researching. I speed uh, casting and rolling for both the flat uh, and long uh, products. And this resulted uh, in, the, in the two technology which are now uh, a real, rely, a reliable uh, uh, facts. The Dewey, the, the, the new universal lenders for flats and the media technology for 
for long products. So, of course, I fully agree with the, with the, with the speech of Mr. Sharma. And he touched, in my opinion, two points uh, which are very important. Uh, because he mentioned that uh, uh, one way is not, uh, one way is to in improve the efficiency, to enhance the efficiency. So this means reduce uh, the worst the worst of, uh, of energy and material. So improve yield and uh, reduce uh, the specific energy. This is uh, the way, uh, this is the way that uh, we, we, we are fully uh, convinced uh, and uh, it's actually, it's not the future, it's the present and uh, um, Dewey and Mida are the answer to, to this, uh, to this uh, demanding of increased sustainability of uh, the steel production. If, if uh, it's my time, I can also introduce and, and switch to the presentation. Yes, please go ahead, please ah, go okay. ahead, it is your turn. Okay, your okay. Turn. Absolutely, so, so no one can take this time away from you. So let me try to share the presentation. I think yes, I please, please. To, yeah. to switch this. Uh, okay, can you see? Yes, we can see, perfect. Okay. Uh, so let me introduce uh, briefly the, the, the technology of MEDA that we already did in the past, I already did in the past, uh, but today I would like to enter in some more specific uh, details of one of the pillar of the endless casting rolling of long products, the uh, octocaster. So just to give a quick uh, introduction, what is MIDA? Uh, MIDA for long products. Uh, MIDA is a very compact uh, mini mill where the caster is uh, directly connected to the uh, rolling mill. So, why in the conventional uh, um, process, the um, scrap is melted uh, and uh, then solidified in billets, which are reheated and they're rolled with the endless casting, we move from the scrap to the finished product in uh, less than two hours. So no more billet uh, cutting, no more billet cooling, no more billet moved by track, no more billet reheating and so on. Just a single endless billet to be rolled smoothly for hours and hours. Uh, the main benefits is given by the endless casting and rolling technology, which uh, in fact permit to avoid completely the reheating uh, furnace uh, downstream of the caster. So the, major energy benefits are given by the endless casting rolling. Then there are other technology that um, help and increase the energy saving, but this is the, the, the main, uh, the main uh, um, target. The other, no, not the main target, the main factor. Uh, in fact, we don't have any more gas reheating furnace in our uh, uh, mid uh, plants. The other is the, um, yield improvement thanks uh, to uh, the um, continuous continuous process we can avoid the uh, scale uh, in the reheating furnace is more or less one percent of uh, worst, worst uh, material we avoid any head and tail trimming we reduce the cable so at the end uh, we can increase up to three percent of the physical uh, yield Plus, thanks to the continuous, continuous process in those markets where the, 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 the long products are sold are sell by um, numbers, uh, we can, the, the, the media technology allows to work at the very mi minimum uh, uh, tolerances, so increasing the uh, virtual yield, so the, the run light uh, yield. And this can be up to 4%, so bringing the yield from the liquid steel to the cell product up to 103%. This typically happening in the, in the US market. Sorry. 
So in a uh, few words, uh, the, the endless casting technology, the media technology is uh, um, improving, reducing the significantly carbon footprint is uh, perfectly uh, shaped for a circular economy, scrap circular economy, reduce the emissions, uh, no more emissions in the rolling mill because no more reheating furnace and uh, uh, water conservation, energy saving. These are some, some main number. Uh, we, energy saving, we can save up to 300 kilowatt hours per tons uh, of reheating furnace. Well, uh, the, the kickoff of the meter was in, uh, in the early 2000. The first plant was uh, in CMC still uh, Arizona. It was producing uh, 350, it is producing <laughs> right now, uh, 350,000 tons per year of uh, rebar in bundles and, uh, and coils. Then from uh, a few, few years later, after the success of the first plant, uh, this technology spread uh, into the world. We have now 21 uh, uh, references, 13 uh, plants in operation, and another eight uh, are being to, to, to be start up in the, in the next uh, couple of years. In the US, uh, um, CMC double and make the third plant uh, last year. So the CMC has a three plant. Nucor started with uh, two plants in 2019. And uh, the last uh, but not least uh, um, plant, uh, we contract with the Pacific Steel Group in California, one of the really difficult uh, place, one of the most difficult places in the world uh, for, uh, for uh, sustainability and green, uh, we will, we will um, build uh, and start up for Pacific Steel, uh, the first full hybrid meter. What does it mean hybrid? This will be equipped with the, the digital melter, the Q1 technology, and will be fed, of course, during the day, completely by a solar panel uh, field. Uh, this was the developing of the technology. First plant was in the US, as I told you, in, 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 in Mesa, Phoenix. And then uh, from the 2015, uh, we have the other two plants in the US, uh, and North Africa, and so on. Very interesting the, what is happening now. From the rebar in bundles, we move uh, to coils, uh, uh, rebar in wire rod. First plant was in China last year, producing 1.3 million tons per year uh, in endless mode. Next year, 2033, will be the first endless plant producing sections. And uh, in Bashundara, next year, will be the first uh, producing smooth uh, and quality wire rod. Some records uh, uh, in, uh, in Gilipingan, China, one single stern caster, which is the core of technology, reached uh, 111 tons per hour. Maximum casting speed, uh, continuous casting speed, is not a peak uh, one second, uh, two seconds of casting speed. This speed is 23 hours continuous during the day, nine meters per minute with a section 130 by 130 millimeter. The meter technology, uh, work on very long sequences without any change uh, in refractory tandis. So the same configuration, the same uh, um, refractory works, uh, for instance, in Egypt up to 66 uh, eats with the section 165, 165. So uh, imagine hours and hours without any head or tail entering the mill. So this is improving the efficiency of the, of the reliability. Um, thanks to the experience and the reliability of the process uh, in, in our last uh, um, startup, uh, we were able to go in endless mode during the, very, during the first hit. So at this point, everything is much more easy and the commissioning takes place in very short time. After four months, uh, Florida was able to exceed 90% of the, of the target uh, produ production. Well, this is the, the, um, the, the, the media today. Um, 
uh, it's based on four pillars. Uh, the sustainability energy saving start from the scrap and the, the automatic scrap management. And uh, the, the, the other pillar is the DigiMelter technology, which uh, thanks to the use of the Q1 allows the use of uh, green energy uh, rather than a traditional electric network. But the very core of, of the end of technology is the caster, which needed to uh, perform at very, very high casting speed. We need to, to at least have uh, 4.5 meters per minute uh, to co connect uh, the caster with the rolling mill in Andalus, but uh, industrially and the, the efficiency start when we exceed six, seven meters per minute. And uh, the octocaster, I will explain, is uh, the uh, technology that, 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 that is working worldwide now in this purpose. Then finally, energy saving rolling uh, and finishing. We are cutting to length directly on the rolling mill, so no cold cutting, not waste of uh, yield uh, in, in the last part of the, of the plant. So ju just to give you some uh, <clears throat> details of the octocaster. Wh why octocaster? In, in, well, in the conventional uh, um, casting technology, um, for high speed, uh, let's say not, not, not for quality, but for um, commercial steel application, the square is the standard uh, shape. But increasing the casting speed and reducing the thickness of the shell at the exit of the, of the caster bring some, some trouble, some problem. One of these is the bulging phenomena. The liquid steel inside of, of the solidified shell is giving a pressure and is deforming the, the, the billet. So, how was yeah. that any and all? All good? Yes. Hello? So can't... Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, Mr. Diloka, please continue. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, please continue. So, so is uh, bulging the, bill, the square billet uh, and the bend uh, the, the, um, the shell. To counteract uh, this phenomena, the, 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 what is used uh, is used to add uh, containment rolls at the exit of, of the, of the um, mold, like in the, in the thin slab caster. But this is... Uh, introducing uh, some complication, cost, uh, and difficulties uh, to maintain these conditions. And uh, as soon as you increase the productivity of the caster, the more the productivity of the caster, the more the length of the rolls you need. For 80 tons per hour, you need four meters of containment rolls. From 100, you need more than eight meters. Uh, in this, uh, in the okay, you can see here the the the, the bulging deformation of the square billet and the bulging deformation of a, an octagon billet, which is uh, extremely reduced. And this is what does it mean? It doesn't mean that I, I don't need any more containment rolls uh, in the exit of the rolling mill. So one say can say why not uh, uh, a circle. Why octagon? Well, a circle is perfect. We, you don't need containment, agreed, but it's very difficult to cast, has not any restraint in the mold and uh, uh, very easily don't, don't touch anymore the, the, the mold and start to have uh, longitudinal cracks and all the all these problems that uh, caster people know. Not only uh, the, the, the octagon is not only helpful uh, in, in the casting machine, but also in the rolling mill because uh, the temperature is much more homogeneous and the roll pass design is more similar to uh, around oval passes, which is helping and uh, reducing the differences in temperature between the surface and the um, and the central and the central pass of the billet. You, as you can see in this simulation, uh, from the square to the octagon, the difference in temperature between the surface and the center is very limited. Uh, this is a summary of the of the situation. In one case, you 
you can typically have 150, 200 degrees of differences between shell, uh, external surface and inner. In the octagon, this difference is uh, less severe. So the uh, quality of the, of the rolling passes uh, are uh, improved. Uh, not only with the with this uh, octagon uh, configuration, uh, the uh, rolling uh, has uh, and the temperature has a major benefits also on the inner part of the, of the material where we can obtain uh, um, an improvement on the um, grain size. Okay. Experiences, we start in 2014 in Greece. Uh, we applied the first uh, octagon on uh, endless line of the, of the Sovel plant. Uh, the, the, the plant was equipped uh, with 140 by a folded square. We installed an, an equivalent octagon. You can see the simplicity of the, of the installation with just two rows of futrons and nothing else in the cooling chamber. We cast immediately at very high speed, both in open and uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, submerged uh, casting speed. We cast at that time six meters per minute. Then we uh, apply in two years later in Egypt. Uh, the size was bigger, under equivalent to uh, 160 by 160, and we reached 80 tons per hour with a single strand. But uh, as happened, uh, Okay, you can see in this uh, in this movie that the, the temperature, uh, homogeneous temperature in the octagon cast, which is one of the key of the reliability and quality also in the rolling mill. But as happened uh, ten years ago, the first uh, the, the first very uh, perfect application was again in CMC Steel Arizona, the first meter. We apply in 2018 the first uh, octagon and they cast immediately, they exceed immediately the limits of the square and they cast up to eight meters per minute, 353 inch per minute. And uh, since the time they didn't uh, remove any more, they are casting since uh, four years now in octagon. But and uh, you can see this moving, it's not accelerated. This is the billet outside of the, uh, of the, of the caster at eight meters per minute. Then we apply the octagon also on the, the, the quality is the same of the round uh, um, section, but increasing the productivity of almost 50% of the maximum productivity of the round. But coming back on the, on the, Rebar and uh, on the MIDA application, CMC uh, apply octagon on the second uh, MIDA plant in the US in 2019, and they are casting out up to 350 inch per minute, right? Nine meters per minute with the octagon. The same uh, in Egypt. This is the actual situation almost with wrong square to octagon and uh, all the other plants are moving uh, like uh, Yehuda still uh, and uh, Nuclear Florida uh, will start in September. Also uh, Pingang will move uh, in China soon uh, while all the new plant, other new plants will start directly with the octagon section. Okay, this is a summary of the technology increase from the 5.5 meters with the power mold in 2007. We, we reach and we're exceeding now nine meters per minute with the octagon section and the eco power mold uh, configuration, which is a, a very um, strong uh, uh, copper mold reinforced by carbon fiber. Well, just to conclude, we, we, we have made real uh, reliable the endless casting in the, in the early 2000. And with the octagon now, we exceed uh, the, the, the limits of the square billets, moving to a new, uh, let's say, field of high speed and energy saving casting. And uh, this is 
this is real and is proven by 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 facts. Okay, thank you for uh, for uh, your attention. I think I exceed ten minutes, but yeah, yeah you are absolutely on time, Andrea. No, no problem at all. Uh, so, any questions uh, uh, for Mr. Andrea Di Luca? Ankit, any questions in the Q and A section? So we have a question from an anonymous attendee. He asks if you have encountered any particular challenge in terms of surface defects from Octocaster. Yes, yes, yes. One was uh, one uh, a, a very big surprise uh, for for us too. Uh, the, 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 let's say the, the small crack uh, population because the quality of the rebar is good, uh, even uh, with some. Uh, um, we, 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 we some small defects are acceptable, but with the octagon, we saw disappearing all these uh, small uh, uh, defects, thanks uh, to the, 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 what I mentioned, the, the quality of the first pass uh, rolling, uh, benefits in the pass design. And thanks to these results, uh, we move uh, to, to most difficult um, still like per tactics and uh, on uh, also uh, high carbon stage. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. oh, so, okay, Ankit, uh, I can see there is a question also from Mr. Saurav. Uh, you, can you upgrade him so that he can ask the question? I, I see uh, they have to explain one 103% in endless casting uh, roll technology. Okay, yeah. um, this is very important. Uh, in the US market, they, uh, I, I don't know, I think also in, in, in the Indian market, they are starting to move in this way. They are selling by number, the bars, not, not by weight. So the light is at the section, and of course, the more you, 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 you sell. Because the selling uh, is based on the uh, nominal uh, nominal uh, weight of the bar. So if you are running at the minimum tolerance, so if you are running uh, minus five percent uh, of the diameter, of course you are gaining five percent of yield um, because you sell more more products than what you what, what you what you are producing. And uh, thanks to the endless technology where we don't, you don't have head and tail, which is, uh, um, let's say, changing the size with the, between uh, the part of the billet, they can run very, very close to the minimum tolerance without the risk of going uh, under tolerance. Because if you go under tolerance, you have uh, not a primary, primary quality. You have to, 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 to scrap the, the, the product. But in this way, they can go they, to the very minimum and get at least three, four percent more of, uh, of yield. I hope to, to, to have clarified this subject. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mr. Diluca. And uh, just one last question we have for you is what kind of typical grade mix do meetup plants have around the world? Sorry, what type of? Uh, what can type you, of, what kind of typical, so you can see the question uh, in the Q&A section, what kind of typical grade mix do meetup plants have around the world? Oh, typical grade mix for the bar is a medium carbon from 20, 20, 25, uh, 30 carbon steel, but uh, for uh, Y road, uh, we start to cast uh, um, low carbon steel from 6, uh, 8, uh, 10, uh, uh, and 15 carbon. These are typical peritactic. And uh, in, in, uh, in the next future, we will start to roll high carbon steel, 80 carbon steel. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Iloka, for answering the questions. And thank, you, thank, thank you for this. Thank you so much. And now you can enjoy your breakfast. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I know, I know it was too much early, for early morning for you. 
but once again, my apologies for the delay. It, uh, it was a pleasure and also a pleasure to yeah, attend this. Uh, yeah, uh, next time I am there for uh, the DIM in uh, Butrio. Uh, I will take a very good gift from you with the best of the Frioli wine. You have it, it, Sure, if you are here in September during the ice tech uh, meeting. Yeah, uh, meeting, yes. Yes, I can invite you to the first uh, MIDA user meeting uh, we, we are organizing. So I can, we can have a good... Uh, yeah. Talking. Okay, we'll keep in touch on this. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, so with that, uh, ciao, ciao. And bye you bye. Can, uh, yeah, you can enjoy your uh, uh, sumptuous breakfast. And in the meantime, I would request my good friend Santonu Rudro to address the local issues and uh, you know combine the media uh, and uh, you know whatever success. Regionally, Danelli India have received uh, on the casting and rolling front to highlight the issues through his presentation. So, over to you, Mr. Santanu Midra. Uh, Mr. Santanu Rudra is the Associate Vice President of Danelli India Casting and Rolling. Over to you, Santanu. Thank you, Mr. Mukaji. Uh, it is a great pleasure for me uh, to give uh, after a long time uh, this uh, okay presentation or okay discussion on this uh, very interesting and innovative technology uh, which uh, we call uh, it is a it is the next generation next generation hot strip meal uh, you can say uh, that uh, whatever the meat okay uh, mr Saad, uh, and uh, uh, first of all i my my best regards to uh, Mr. Saab and also uh, Sharma Saab uh, and um, regarding and also um, Mr. Bihar Sharma Saab. Regarding uh, this, uh, that innovative technology, Danieli, as you know, Danieli uh, every year spend uh, about 20 to 22% of their um, uh, in, in R&D research and development for this kind of uh, features like uh, uh, you just my colleague a uh, few minutes before their term he is telling regarding Mira and uh, now this uh, due uh, Daniel Universal Endless. So uh, that uh, but still we are we are that what I am calling, telling you that uh, still we are we are developing that new new concept so that it can replace in uh, to the next two to five years uh, that conventional HSM hot sim mill uh, by by okay by volume volume wise and also for producing the uh, your high grade product um, just i started with uh, this uh, thin sap casting and rolling technology because when uh, in 1985 when the first pilot plant came in world regarding this thin sap casting rolling technology that time uh, we think uh, about that slab thickness was around 40 millimeters and today our last plant, which we sold in New York, West Virginia, that uh, that is 140 millimeter. So in 1985 to 2022, this uh, 37 years, we have increased the slab thickness from 40 to 140 millimeter. This is also an innovation. Uh, I am not. Uh, this is a uh, that, uh, but but it is also a innovation that uh, from 40 to now we are going to 140, and it is because it is because that uh, uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Sab is telling that uh, to produce that uh, peritectic grade and uh, especially that uh, your um, your this um, uh, uh, what i can say that um, uh, minus uh, 60 degree centigrade temperature can reduce this uh, this plate that we can produce and we have a plan we have a plan it is not a new new features that which we, uh, we cannot produce in uh, okay that's csp that is because uh, that uh, that plant is uh, in tandem because if you want to produce this uh, peritectic grade you have to give some space between roughing mill and finishing mill so that the re proper recrystallization is there and in that way, Danini's first pilot plant in uh, SR Algoma, we have placed that two roughing mill and four finishing mill. And from that uh, point of time, and today also, we our technology is same to same that we are 
uh, uh, giving that gap of around 30 meters to 32 meters between roughing mill and finishing mill so that we can produce this high end high uh, grade of api grades and uh, your uh, other other uh, high strength uh, uh, grades also in this in this plant in this mill so now i am going uh, for this uh, my presentation so this why this um, uh, this uh, you can say that this technology is innovative because in just 2013, when we first sold our FinSAP casting rolling plant in NMBC, that time in two stand we are producing, we, are, we have given them 2.95 million ton, but okay, still that grant is uh, okay, that start, started, but not producing the coils. But that time, the 2015, 2014, that time, two stand we are giving 2.95 million ton. And today we are talking about one stand, 4 million ton. And uh, Shanwasab is well aware because we are also talking about uh, JSPL also regarding this technology. Uh, but I will not highlight it, this technology not now because this is uh, under, uh, you can say that under um, uh, patent. So if this techno patent means that this is a con new concept, it's single stand, we are going to produce uh, 4.2 million, up to 4.4 to 4.2 million ton, depending upon that product mix and other things. But uh, whatever I want to tell in my presentation that yes, this technology through electric art furnace tool, because in everywhere, in you can, if you can see that uh, outside India, that everybody is now going through electric art furnace tool and these things are casting rolling, uh, so that uh, that uh, our future generation can save and they can take that pure oxygen because now that 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 is the most uh, that even urgent requ requirement for our future generation because uh, otherwise that uh, this pollution level is every day when when I when I will see that air quotient in index in uh, in uh, because we have everybody has smartphone so when we ever see that air question index in all major cities where the steel plant are there and it is more than 200 230 then it is really looking something so that's why we think that what uh, that um, uh, your co2 emission should be less okay it is from steel industry it is from by car or something we have to think about that one and accordingly we are coming with this technology which can give you that same to same uh, product which we are now also producing in hot strip mill. So now I am going to my next slide that is that which can added value grades you can produce in this um, you can say okay I am, I am giving bigger little bigger this one. Uh, yeah so so you can see that uh, that uh, what, that major major grades you can produce uh, that uh, what I am telling you that ultra low carbon and if steel because this 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 is a part of the you can say that major uh, you can say that uh, grade which we are now telling that yes it can be produced in thin sap casting molding good and we are also. Now in New York, West Virginia, we have we are producing we are also given some percentage around five three to four percent in our product mix. This you will see an EIP grade, and for that, Danieli has now prepared that is giving three rescaling system because this is the okay caster. There is there is something technology is there, and in mill also we have to give some technology is there. So that's why in meal we are giving three descaling technologies. One is after your caster, slab caster, before entering in, entering into the pendulum shear. Then we have another descaling system that is in front of roughing mill, and then another descaling system that is in front of your finishing mill. So three descaling system. That first descaling system pressure will be around 50 bar, and other will be around 310 bar. So that that your whatever the scale generation will be formed, that can be purely properly cleaned, and that slab will be rolled through the roughing mill and finishing mill properly, and give you a good coil, which is a real you can say that ultra low carbon grade coil. Then low carbon is, is easily possible in 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 conventional CSP also because that is not a big big uh, you can say the high grade or something like that. HSLA also. Okay, strength wise, you can produce into CSP also. In but if you go the higher strength, more than 330, 340 
uh, your megapascal then you have to think about that that uh, conventional you can say that batch mode process so that you can get that good property of that then medium carbon then weather resistant cotton gate because this is also a new new development weather resistant cotton gate that is also in our product place it is now more that whatever we are putting earlier then high carbon gates for the tool steel that is also we are producing api gate we are already producing in our omp russia plant that is already existing uh, for last 10 years that pipe pipe gates all pipe we are producing from in this it is production is around 1.7 million ton in single stand then dual phase martensitic and silicon gate also we are we are producing now nowadays in tinsa casting rolling plant now I will show you one uh, that uh, market extra price versus steel grades that uh, in Euro part on that uh, you can see that uh, that uh, okay uh, that uh, extra deep drawn steel and uh, drawn steel and then your uh, HSLA grades then API grades up to X70 then um, medium carbon high carbon grades what are, and structural steel what are, because this structural steel is typical you can say that uh, uh, typical csp production i am not talking about csp nexus csp nexus is a, is a is a good is a solution which is now same to same as qsp but previously what csp was there that csp can produce only the structural steel and some kind of you can say that medium carbon and uh, some some uh, you can say low carbon low carbon streets but nowadays that if if i talk about esp and if i talk about csp nexus yes they can also produce but esp is not esp cannot produce because it is a continuous thing in esp you cannot produce api higher api gates because due to the your uh, um, uh, that high speed shear before down coiler you cannot cut more than six millimeter thickness but okay nowadays we can we are also uh, uh, giving high speed shear up to 16 millimeter thickness bed cutting so uh, in endless also we can produce 16 meter uh, up to 16 millimeter uh, sorry up to 12.7 millimeter uh, plate uh, coil in uh, endless mode also but uh, for api grades it is definitely required your batch mode which is uh, possible in daniele universal endless and as well as csp nexus also so these are the major advanced get because that since market is upgrading and we are also well, that uh, that whatever the product gets is also required that is you can see that 60 percent nowadays product price value is given only advanced gate that is advanced high strength steel and api x70 and x80 gates 20 percent is based on your advanced gate and uh, Twenty percent commercial gates, that is low carbon gates, DD eleven. And what about the market extra price versus steel thickness you will get from this uh, technology? Because in our technology, in general universal endless, you can go in conventional way and as well as endless way. Conventional way, I will I will define you what is conventional way and what is semi conventional way and what is endless way. That I will define you. Conventional way is one slab. That means when the slab is coming from the um, your uh, after after soft reduction from the uh, caster, then the slab is cutted by the pendulum shear, and uh, accordingly the tunnel furnace will store the cutted slabs. Maybe you can say I can tell you 18 meters long or up to 20 meters long, three slabs or four slabs in the tunnel furnace, and 120 meter slabs produce one coil that is called conventional you can say conventional uh, process of uh, producing the coil that is called batch mode then another process is there that is called semi continuous mode semi continuous mode is that what about the tunnel furnace length suppose 120 120 meter tunnel furnace length in uh, for daniel universal endless we, we generally kept tunnel furnace length around 8 80 to 100 millimeter depending upon that product mix so accordingly my tunnel furnace length that slab length will be around 100 millimeter or 80 millimeter and from 80 millimeter or 100 millimeter 100 meter i will produce three three coils or five coils depending upon the length of the slabs that is that means there is a mother slab and from mother slab i will prepare five dotted coils that is the semi endless mode and for that also i have to use that high speed shear before the down coiler 
and endless mode is that is until and unless my liquid steel is not empty in the turn dish, that process is going on. And before down coiler, there is a high speed shear and it will cut and make a coil continuously. So, so I will show you in, in my next uh, slide. Okay, before that, uh, there are some, okay, but that uh, wall right uh, TSCI report, which I told earlier also that uh, you can see that uh, uh, that a reference, a reference list, we have all blue colors, we have reference in things uh, uh, are the reference. Now I will show you one video to understand what is coil to coil mode, what is semi endless mode, and what is uh, endless mode. Coil to coil mode, batch mode, which we call batch mode. So now, sorry, before that, I want to tell you, uh, I but just uh, give you the description of the equipment. This is the your uh, segment, custom segment, ladle. You can say then then the turn dish is there, then the pendulum shear, then once your torch cutting machine will be there, then. We have a one descaling system, then it is a tunnel furnace. Then we have vertical laser. Then we have uh, your uh, descaling system, then three uh, uh, high, uh, high reduction mill. And apart, up, after that, induction heater and then five finishing mill. Now you see that pendulum shear will cut this from the, uh, the from the whatever the slab is coming, pendulum shear will cut and one slab will produce one coil. This is called coil to coil. One slab is equal to one coil, which I am telling you earlier. So this is your coil to coil mode. So in next slide, now semi endless mode. In semi endless mode, I what I told you earlier. That my slab length will be equivalent to tunnel furnace length, maybe 80, maybe 90 meters, like that, depending on the product needs. And from the, that slab length, I will produce daughter coils, three or five, depending upon the length. So you can see that, that this, you see that tunnel furnace is now filling. When it will fill, pendulum chair will cut that slab. Now this slab, mother slab, I will produce three to five coils from in the down coil. That is called semi endless mode. This high speed shear is cutting. This is called semi endless mode. Now I am coming to endless mode. You see, until and unless the liquid metal is there in the turn dish, that, that sorry, this is semi endless mode. This is endless mode. So high speed shear will cut. Again, high speed shear that this coil I will coil, then again it's cutting. So until and unless the liquid chill is your room empty, the coil will going on producing. So this is our endless mode. So all three modes you are getting in the same technology that is called, we call uh, uh, Danieli universal endless. So this is the some uh, pictorial uh, uh, photographs of uh, caster casting uh, your ladle and casting, uh, you can say that uh, casting position, but, uh, and uh, this is a pendulum shear, you can see. Tunnel furnace mill. So now uh, there is an interesting slide uh, that uh, which I am telling you. Uh, I told you about earlier that uh, when you will put uh, the producing the uh, coil in which mode. So the blue color was blue color is the uh, that your production should be in coil to coil because you are going from. Uh, 1.5 millimeter thickness to higher thickness. So that is the reason you have to go for the coil to coil and for these grades, because, okay, because in endless also you can produce 
that this gets this uh, you can this up to six millimeter or seven millimeter eight millimeter plate because you can cut in higher speed shear. But that the, that uh, one major disadvantage is there that you have always uh, switch on that your induction heater. And there is a huge uh, consumption of electricity because there are 10 modules, eight to 10 modules are there and each is around 2.4, 2, 2, 2 to 2.5 megawatt. So you can say that for endless process, uh, in uh, particular in ESP, I have to switch on every time this, uh, your um, induction heater and which will a huge cost for the electricity purpose. But, in Daniel Universal Endless, you cannot, you have not to switch off, uh, switch on this always this endless mode. Whenever you require to produce that thinner gauge, you have to uh, bring bring uh, this this induction heater into the into the main rolling position, and accordingly you can produce that uh, thinner thinner gauge. That I will show you on some videos also because in Shagan Jingtang I will show you how we are using this induction heater when it is required and when it is not required. But before that, this presentation will show you that uh, which kind of grade you have to produce in the coil to coil load. This silicon grade, this is a major one. Uh, you can say there's a high value grade. You have to go in coil to coil mode. Means one slab is one equivalent to one coil. Uh, in endless mode, it is not possible to produce uh, silicon grade. Better, okay, we have shown in coil to coil. Better because you know the silicon gate, I need a finishing mill temperature before entering that finishing mill, I need a higher temperature. So for that, I it will be better to produce silicon gate in semi-continuous mode, semi semi endless mode. Because if I can take a mother slab of around 80 meters and then I can zoom it in the finishing mill with higher temperature by giving induction heater, using induction heater, then I will get the better quality of silicon gates in uh, uh, Daniel Universal Endless. Similarly, advanced high strength steel, you can produce in coil to coil mode that from uh, one to uh, up to four, okay, three, four millimeter we are showing here, but up to nowadays, you can produce up to one to six millimeter also in uh, endless mode. But uh, uh, okay, this is uh, because now that uh, you can say that uh, since that uh, uh, high speed shear is capacity is more nowadays, so you can cut up to six millimeter also. So advanced side cell you can produce, but API gate you cannot produce in endless mode and not in uh, conventional CSP mode. You cannot produce API gate because for that we require uh, a certain temperature to make the certain certain space to make the uh, proper uh, crystallization because when slab is coming uh, from the slab, that time the slab inner uh, structure was a uh, little bit coarse type. And when it enters into the roughing mill after after roughing, then it it takes some shape. But after that, you have to give some open space to make it, it homogeneous. Uh, that structure in, in the homogeneous shape. And after that, you have to put that in the finishing mill. Otherwise, you will not get that proper quality of API gate so, uh, in uh, conventional, uh, you can thin up casting rolling. And that is the reason in semi, in uh, conventional hot strip mill, we can produce these API gates because there is a gap between the, we call delay table, which is between roughing mill and finishing mill. Okay, in conventional hot strip mill, due to the reversing process, uh, that length is uh, bigger and uh, between roughing mill and finishing mill, we can we kept around 90 meters, 95 meters. But here we kept around 30 meters because this, whatever the slab thickness is there, that slab thickness, because in, in hot seed mill, conventional hot seed mill, you can slab thickness nowadays up to 300 millimeter. But here we can, we have achieved up to 140 millimeter. And if you go for that API grade, that means that uh, what I can say that one is to five ratio, that uh, that thumb rule ratio for producing the API gate. That means 14 divided by five, it is around five, um, 20 millimeter. I can easily produce nowadays from 140 millimeter slab thickness, the API, actual API gate, X70 gate, 20 millimeter. Then low carbon, medium carbon, I am not talking about because these are these are the common product which can be produced in ESP, CSP, everywhere you can produce and uh, this is not a very high grade. So Whatever the gates I am talking about, these last three gates, these are the major gates if you get some return of investment from your plant. 
so these are the one i can i can just uh, in endless mode what we cannot produce i know in uh, qsp do which qsp do you can produce all kind of grades you can see that uh, uh, nowadays you can produce all kind of grades in qsp do and that we will take guarantee but in endless mode this red color are very critical silicon and uh, ultra low carbon and if steel and core nhc api manganese boron is also critical but okay green color is possible there is no no problem to produce in endless mode so i am now showing you one video that uh, that is our last three years our this plant is running in shagang gintang this is a pilot plant you can say that this is running in both uh, your uh, conventional way means uh, uh, your you can say that um, uh, 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 coil, coil to coil mode in semi endless mode and in endless mode. I am showing you this video, that plan video. This is the induction heater. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight modules of 2.5 megawatt each. But this is when required in endless mode, then it is it is working. And otherwise it will be in the parking position. That I will show you that in this is the finishing mill stand. These are patented vertical vertical curve thin cluster cluster. Pendulum shear, cut the shear slab. I about taking this. One thing I want to just highlight that earlier one. You can see this, oh, sorry. What happened? Sorry. Hello? Just a minute. Can you see my video? Uh, yes, yes, I can see it, yes. But it is not coming full screen. Yeah. Just a minute. Ah, okay. You can see the up to 120 centimeter slab thickness. This is the subtle furnace, tunnel furnace. Now I am showing you this coil to coil mode. What I am showing you earlier that in, in now it is in the mill, how it is coil to coil mode will produce. Now you see in the mill. Now in the, in the mill. This is the half rougher finishing mill. You see, if, uh, in national it is in parking position, it's not required, coil to coil mode.
So three features in a single meal, coil to coil, semi endless and in endless, you are getting in single meal. And now it's coming semi endless mode. One uh, mother slab producing three daughter coils. Now induction heater will be in the in its working position. Last time you saw that induction heater is not in your working position. This time induction heater will come in working position. You see induction heater is coming in its working position. And this induction heater is our patented induction heater. We are not buying from market. These are patented. Now it's time for endless. So in, in a single meal, you will get three facilities, coil to coil, semi endless and endless. Here also you see that in the induction it is in, in its working position. And this is a, con a, a, a one single pulpit. You can see from caster to down coiler. <coughs> this is a high speed shear. You can see that yes here the right pitch here is cutting. Completely automated, no manual intervention. You see that coil telescope city. Perfect tennis So this is my last slide, but it is not last for Daniele because we are still thinking, we are still innovating, innovating uh, the technology that how we can give that major, that more uh, you can say that uh, comfort to our customer and accordingly we are now discussing about uh, single stand because whatever you have seen in in uh, that uh, due that is up to we are now giving up to 2.7 million ton in single stand but now we are thinking about how to produce for more than 4 million ton 4 to 4 million 4.2 million ton in single stand uh, subcaster uh, through from this uh, thin subcasting and rolling and this will be our next uh, challenge uh, to uh, for uh, giving to the customer. Thank you all for giving your time to listen our innovative technology regarding insect casting and loading. Hello.
Yes, uh, uh, just a second, I am, uh, uh, I'll stop your sh screen sharing. Yeah, you can stop the screen sharing. Any questions? Yeah, I'll just check. So we have a question from Mr. B. Pawar. Yes. Uh, so Mr. Pawar, I'll uh, give you permission to ask your question directly. So if you can unmute and ask your question, Mr. Rudra. Yeah, I am B.D. Pawar from Dolly Blunt, GSW. Okay, thank you, tell me. <clears throat> yeah, I have one question, say for example, yes. How uh, the uh, endless technology uh, take care of uh, steep safe, particularly in thin gauge, one mm, point eight mm thickness? Means means uh, that uh, uh, during coiling or during during uh, uh, that uh, after 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 rolling, exiting finishing rolling. after no, after exiting finishing mean after yeah, exiting yeah, finishing yeah, right, yeah, after finishing mean, yes. Uh, but that means you, you uh, that uh, uh, that you are you are telling that how you how you uh, uh, prevent that uh, sky up or something like that. So no, that no, no, no. Let, uh, let me tell you. I will put my question in differently. Uh, yeah. What happened is uh, this in uh, CSP. We are we are running, you know that we are running the CSP, mm -hmm. and uh, particularly the thicknesses of hot oil coil below uh, two mm. We have a big challenge of safe. Safe means getting I value, right? I value. Okay, so I value. Okay, 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 okay. So normally, in uh, for example, in Hajira Isar, they mm -hmm. put you know the separate uh, skin pass mill and coupled with the leveler to correct the shape of water coil, and uh, mm -hmm. it is additional one process. Mm -hmm. So okay. can we avoid that additional process and get a safe which is desired? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Now I understand. Okay. Now and I how? And how? Yes, 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 yes. That will be taken care in in our last. Uh, uh, two finishing stand that is uh, F, uh, F6 and F7 that uh, whatever that I value you required for the particular grade that we will take care because we have also here that we call it uh, our uh, optimal uh, shape roll technology that is OSRT and uh, we have also at the, uh, we have that uh, your positive bending is also there and uh, you can say the high uh, accuracy of HDC is there so by this these three controls we can we can give you the correct i value for the required grades that will be and for that we do not require yes on, on uh, that skin pass mill is a very good choice uh, for after this point 8 you can get that uh, malleable property will be higher if you put a skin pass mill and that you will give a additional uh, you can say uh, ROI, uh, return of investment in place of uh, whatever you will get from the conventional hot steam mill. But in case of this, uh, our QSP due, whatever the properties you will get, that will be as per that, uh, the, that uh, your I value. And for that, we do not require any uh, skin pass mill or uh, you can say that any other 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 plan. other plant That's in right. our in our in our uh, uh, plan. But of course, that is what you are telling. That's yes, skin pass mill is a added advantage, and you will get uh, maybe maybe some um, percentage, some extra added advantage uh, when you sell this coil in the market. My second question is, you know, uh, you you are putting induction heater in between, right? For particularly your endless part. Yes. For so how much part, delta? For, how much delta for, temperature not, is? You know, delta temperature. It means how much yeah, temperature yeah. it rises. It, it 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 increase up to up to 100 degrees centigrade 100 to 150 degrees centigrade okay and you you told and that it, it depends upon it depends upon how many because you do not require always that 100 to 150 degrees centigrade suppose you require 50 degrees centigrade so that time you have not to put all eight modules yeah maybe yeah, you will put two modules and accordingly you will increase the temperature that is also so, there in our system. right 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 so another challenge in uh, you know the uh, CSP or in the endless is uh, taking care of the age defects, right? Yes. Particularly the exactly. age track or the in age conventional. Yes, I am hundred percent. I am hundred percent agree with that. But because in conventional CSP there is no age up. and for that thing, because now you see that when you will go for the thinner thickness means in in India whatever the CSP has there that maximum thickness is. 70 to 80, 80 millimeters type thickness. And for that, Azar is, Azar is not required. If customer is saying, then Azar. So, age defect will come. Without Azar, you cannot 
prevent the edge defect. So for that is that is the reason now we are increasing the slat thickness and we are giving the edge up in front of rocking stand to prevent this edge defect. So this edge are how much width can be reduced? It is it can reduce up to one inch each side. That means twenty five millimeter. That means total fifty fifty millimeter edging we can do in edge. That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? Yeah. So uh, no, I don't think we have any further questions. So in that okay. case, we will move on to our next speaker. Okay, um, so our next thank speaker. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much, Mr. Rudra, for your address. Yeah. yeah. Our next speaker for today is Mr. N. S. Sharma. He's the general manager in charge wire rod mill RINL from Visakhapatnam Steel Plant. So uh, over to you, Mr. Sharma. Good evening, respected Sri Priya Sharma ji, Nirmal Mukherjee, and other speakers, and my dear friends. First of all, I would like to thank Steel and Metallurgy who have given me an opportunity to speak. We thank RINM and our Director of Operations, Sri Ajit Saxena ji, who has provided me an opportunity to present on behalf of my record. A brief about uh, RINM. RNL Vizac Steel Plant was set up in 1980s, commissioned in 19, mid 80s, and commissioned in 1990s. And uh, we have uh, uh, the capacity at that time was 3 million tons, and it was the first India shore based plant. And uh, we have all wrong product mills, uh, fire rod mill, LMM, and uh, the, uh, MMSM at that stage. And uh, that was commissioned in 1990s, and that, during that period, that those were the latest state of art uh, mills. We had a uh, wire rod mill uh, one which had uh, different features, and it was the first rolling mill, four strand rolling mill in India, uh, which was uh, commissioned during that time. And uh, we had expanded to 6.3 million stage in 19, 2014, and we have another three long product mills like wire rod mill. As, uh, Special bar mill and STM. And after modernization and upgradation, we had a enhanced capacity of 7.3 million tons. The rolling mills capacity of WRM1, which was envisaged to be 0.85, was then uh, increased to 1.05. Just by what we have come across those difficulties, we have just migrated, we have overcome those difficulties and we have uh, migrated to 1.05. Million tons. Wire rod mill was the uh, what is called is a four strand mill, and uh, at that time it was the first you know, node twist mills were given, and uh, we had roughing mill, it made mill IDs, and uh, uh, what is called is NPMs, pinch roll and laying head given by Morgan and SMS uh, Germany. And at that time, the, the technology has migrated. I will be taking this for a few minutes because I have worked with both the technology mills. From that and the 2016 mill also, which we have come and where we are going to, I will be telling you about that. That time, DC technology of Siemens analog system was there, and the PLCs were standalone PLCs. All these things were a limitation because of the processors and what is called is your uh, processors and processing speeds. Com process computation had come during that time, and production com uh, computer which was doing the material tracking, etc. had come during that time, and it was a real-time application uh, at that time. When we enhanced it, we wanted to enhance this, uh, what is called this capacity. We had the first, had that uh, analog system have a, uh, what is called is inherent, uh, some, uh, what is called is deficiencies of drifting components due to ambient aging and etc. We shifted over to our digital drive technologies, and then our, we have changed our meal PLC, uh, uh, PLCs and the computers to DCS systems of ABB in the later time. And by this, what we have done is we have made our automation level to a higher, we have got to, at par with the latest automation available in the, uh, what is called in 2015 and 16. By this, what we have achieved was our availability was has increased drastically. 
and our utilization has increased and mobile rates have decreased and defective generation has also decreased because we could achieve 1.05 million ton easily and our project product range also had shifted from what is called planes to rebar there was a policy decision taken and we had migrated to maximum of uh, rebar when it came to wireroad mill 2 in the 2050s and all the there was technology upgradation in uh, what is called it is a two strand mill with fast wrapping mill and it made blocks of ips and ngm and rsm technology came and intelligent picture the new technologies adopted were what is called is more or less whatever the loose ends we have we have found during our operation and we have closed try to close them those were attended very nicely and water cooling boxes what we say we have seen a continuous closed loop water control and uh, what is called is furnace level 2 we have developed in wrm1 also furnace level 2 operation where we were operating because today's topic more of as the sharma sir was talking also that we should uh, focus more on our energies and uh, savings and the carbon footprint and all so in wrm1 also we had taken that challenge of delay management and i uh, what is called is uh, uh, what is called is uh, we were increasing the climb due to controlling with line stoppages the temperatures are reduced and increasing without manual intervention and fuel air fuel ratio with respect to the production but what i personally feel right now that what is called is the uh, we are uh, capturing lot of data over a period of time and all these data have to be used only for what is called is uh, improving upon the technical Uh, atomic factors eef specific energy consumption specific power consumption and uh, what is called is your yield cobble rate etc which really hit us and uh, which act uh, which uh, are affecting our uh, what is called is a uh, return on investment they should be controlled to a larger extent for that we have to go above because the all this automation and all do not to speak it is only for interlocking safety purpose equipment purpose and we are gaining better productivity etc but from my view point of saying this once we integrate this data which is available and use the technology of industrial 4.0 or artificial intelligence and ml machine learning we can we interpret what is the end product we have loose and scadas are available so we have also tapped up the power uh, power being used for the at a billet time because each and every billet we roll we are uh, what is called is tagging with it all the parameters of that uh, uh, rolling parameters which are associated with the billet so that we can uh, declare the grade by using the mathematical algorithm and we are back tracking it but to preempt also we i uh, we have what we have done is to reduce down the specific power consumption we have uh, tapped up the real power consumption on a real time monitoring basis and we are giving it to our operator to see what is this uh, what is this uh, specific power consumption at given moment of time similarly the operator is given what is the billet temperature and the discharge temperature and we are also because the furnace and mill when the utilization and productivity as is very good the bottleneck is the availability of the free hooks so we always have a we have planned what is called a hook management system because we are having five the uh, hook conveyor circuit create power cell and six compactors and four turn cells and depending upon the hook position and the hook monitoring these persons are controlling the furnace we have a few takeaways like we i am looking after the new for the new future generation the technology should be developing these uh, data should be used and uh, what is called is uh, uh, we should use this data for giving the correct uh, what is the even the 
sell more uh, blowers, uh, control, and everything should be controlled with this data. We have uh, worked on the idle running of the systems, idling of the uh, furnace. These things we have controlled to a larger extent by reducing the, thereby reducing the specific power consumption. With this, I would like to say that we have developed another uh, feature, which is uh, what is called to decrease the, uh, what is called is repair type. And uh, we have gone for the mobile apps also to, for a, which is a troubleshooter for the engineers or the French guys to see what is the, and that is what is called knowledge management also we are putting into those systems so that they can come back in a very faster time in the event of a breakdown. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sharma. So uh, we will now uh, move on to our final speaker for today. Uh, we have Mr. G.C. Rao, Senior Vice President, Rolling Mill Electrotherm India Limited. So over to you, Mr. Rao. Thank you, uh, Steel and Metallurgy, giving us an opportunity to present ourselves. And good evening, all panelists. Uh, just I will share my uh, one screen share. Uh, Okay, this is uh, uh, what I tell next generation direct link casting and rolling technology. Uh, just I say uh, this is the journey of electrotherm in this uh, to, uh, 1983 we have started engineering and uh, technology division. This is in Ahmedabad. Uh, then in step 2000 we started induction based heating equipment and uh, we have supplied uh, more than 5500 equipments in all over the world. And we can supply it in more than 55 countries in uh, all over world. In 2005, we also established one steel plant. This is in Gandhidam, near to Kutch. In 2006, we have started our uh, electro electric operated vehicle. Even 2008-10, we started TLT. And 1416, uh, we started cotton band and epoxy coating plant. In 2017, we take our CVS Europe for designing, engineering, and manufacturing of long and flat products. Uh, long and flat products. Uh, uh, then 2018, we modernized our rolling mill and 2019, we started our uh, rolling mill division. A rolling mill uh, means manufacturing division. I think this is, uh, everybody have already explained uh, steel, uh, uh, steel making and rolling journey. In the past, uh, this is conventional way we have go with this iron ore pellets and uh, uh, coke making, blast furnace, then hot metals, uh, steel making units, then we transport this to in this uh, rating furnace, then it is go by this uh, roughing mill, finishing mill, then casting. Uh, today, uh, that you see that uh, uh, thin slab casting and uh, rolling, that is now already it is going through this induction heating units. It is replacing this rating for nuns. And, uh, uh, and uh, we think in tomorrow, this will be directly uh, fed to this system. And beyond this, strip casting also already in trial in all over. Uh, this will be successfully, successful already established. Time will come. I think the strip will directly fed to the finishing mill. This is a uh, hot product range completely. We are already in the business of this rolling mill. We introduce ourselves uh, besides this uh, uh, means induction furnace and caster. Now we have uh, have facilities and we have uh, all this uh, in uh, the we are supplying this uh, single speed 25 meter to 30 meter per second conventional twin channel and rotating channel single slit rebar up to 25 meter per seconds and slow speed and uh, semi-endless and endless meal also. 
slitting up to two slit, three slit, four slit, up to uh, speed of 13 to 14 meter per second. High speed uh, wear out solutions with endless or semi endless uh, on 100 meter per second. And even in the uh, section mill, we have already uh, uh, light and medium section mills. We are focusing on the narrow strip mill in the Indian market, uh, uh, thickness up to 1.2 mm to 6 mm, uh, capacity of the uh, 3 lakh tons. Uh, what is your unique uh, uh, proportions? One stop solution from melting to finished product, from scrap to finished product. Integrated solution to the customer from concept to commissioning. Even uh, we can uh, uh, commissioning uh, have operation the plant and uh, established to the customers. Compact and agronomic designing, minimum area, and every day we are innovating some new things, optimizing this uh, manpower requirement, inbuilt uh, provision for the future expansions, minimum capex investment, uh, less downtime, reliability in operation, complete customer satisfaction. Prompt after sales service. We have uh, everywhere you can find and sell service uh, uh, in India as well as in abroad. So major factor which are responsible for the endless casting already uh, already we have discussed and our panelists already uh, clarify. Once again, uh, because of we are also making uh, equipment for the steel making uh, for designing of the mold. Dynamic liquid core reductions, hydraulic mold oscillations, mold double controllers, electromagnetic stirrers, slag detection sensor, mold powder quality, redesigning of uh, uh, summers entry nozzles, uh, flying tundis technique for rapid replacement of the spent tundis, water spying, and with the automations, use of high pressure disc colors uh, and edgers in the mills, use of uh, electromagnetic brakes. Uh, these metallurgical features in the finished products already uh, everybody talks about this uh, some few features in uh, endless and semi endless that we have uh, facilitated homogeneous structure better mechanical properties like toughness bendability due to non metallic inclusions or small globular written in the same uh, shape and size permits premature uh, precipitation of the micro alloying elements due to this high temperature of slab billet hot rolling uh, and uh, there is a high reduction in the strip as well as in bar of 50%. It gives a better elongation ductility to this re refining of the grains. Why this direct rolling public? You sell this endless or semi endless uh, rolling mills that uh, low investment cost, significant uh, energy saving, high yield reduction in the manpower less store uh, space availability, reduction in the emission of the carbon, carbon dioxide. So, this same uh, applicable in the narrow strip mill also. Uh, this is some typical uh, bar, basically this is a bar, uh, endless in the bar rolling mill, just to show how we are working within our steel plant also. This is a typical layout showing a caster uh, and this rolling mill is nearby to it. It is continuously uh, already, uh, this automation is controlled in the caster. They continuously uh, supplying this billet to this rolling mill and uh, uh, speed and uh, size already controlled by this uh, uh, upgrades and automations. This is some uh, typical cost analysis that we want to show. Uh, in particular, our case, if you see this is particular in bar case, if you see the conversion cost is coming in and around this is thousand rupees for uh, uh, this variable cost. Uh, 1000 rupees from uh, scrap to uh, finish bar. What next? Electrics is working and uh, uh, how to optimize and how to, uh, how to develop the further uh, upgradation of these mails and caster also. We have, uh, uh, right now we are doing one compact stand, what we call a high reduction compact stand that will give a new direction in the rolling technology. That means just a graphical picture I'm showing. The four roll stand, it can have the different uh, uh, drives also. This is already we are implemented in our plants. This is a power project, uh, pilot project. In near, near future, we can uh, uh, send to the markets 
how this with this uh, compact technology and the endless it can give a, a new direction and uh, to the rolling uh, uh, this endless rolling mills that it can reduce the number of stand will be reduced lesser space requirement high reduction means 50 to 55 percent in every stand uh, that lesser manpower requirement maintenance capital cost will be less and less power consumption also there uh, will uh, revolutionize the concept of endless and semi-endless bar mills in the near future. Sir, sir, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Rao. Uh, so that wraps up our uh, session for today. So uh, any final remarks from, uh, from any of the panelists? No, I think uh, everybody is in the same direction. We are also working uh, how to develop the further uh, this growth of this journey of in uh, uh, reducing the carbon footprints and make it India green steel uh, manufacturing. Electrothrum is uh, innovating any every equipment to work in this green steel. And the near future, we are working with our uh, starting with three ton. Right now, we are up, up induction furnace of 80 ton. Uh, even uh, by this green uh, revolutions, we are working on this. Maybe in near future, we will come to a market with this high capacity of induction partners, having how to use this, uh, optimize of this, uh, this scrap use and make it a green steel manufacturing in India. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Raut. Mr. Raut, I must mention that uh, compliments to Mr. Bandari and uh, his creation, whatever Mr. Bandari has created. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is. It is a. I would say a first example of what Atmanirbhar Bharat can do. Please, yes, yes, convey, yes, Please convey my special regards to him for yes, making yes, yes, for making indigenous available of equipments and technology possible in this country. So yes, sir. The, the, uh, I would say kudos to Mr. Bhandari for having created the entity called Electrotham India, which has actually. Uh, delivered so much to this country. Thank you, uh, sir. Thank you. You know, I had uh, a, a brief discussion with the CEO of Daneli. Santanu is here. Uh, uh, he can, in fact, uh, listen to all this. When I asked Mr. Benedetti, why don't you start uh, the process of producing induction furnace in India? He said it's not viable. But I'm telling you, uh, if we can make technologies available at a low cost, okay, we know induction furnace has these problems. We know yeah. what are the drawbacks of an induction furnace. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, but at the same time, we have to look at the question of affordability in this country. Yes, We yes, must yes. make equipments uh, and technology available at a very low cost. For example, today I was talking about uh, the possibility of gasifiers being made available. Yes. I, uh, way back in, I'm telling you, way back in 2000, 20 years ago, <coughs> I uh, went to the Bhavan Ministry of Steel. I met the steel minister those days and the steel secretary time and again to yes, make yes. pelletization technology available in this country at a low cost. In the same way, I feel if the future has to be, uh, you know, DRIEF root or scrap based fruit, then we need to make available induction furnaces at a low cost. And, exactly, sir. Uh, and that is possible only with indigenous technology. Yes, yes. Because yes. It is, you cannot expect the Danelis and the uh, primators yes, and the SMS, uh, SMSs to go for uh, you know development of induction furnace. They would uh, up to electric arc furnace, or smaller size furnaces, for example, Mida, which Shantanu uh, gave a presentation. Yes. If that far, it is okay for them. But for uh, you know small size units to survive and to come up in this country, we need induction furnaces to be made available at a low cost with basic technology, but with sufficient level of automation available. So my special thanks yes. to you. And uh, to uh, Mr. Bhandari, please convey my regards that 
uh, we need more of the indigenous technologies available in this. Yes, sir. Thank I you. have one question. I have one question to Mr. Rao that you show yes. that uh, narrow strip mill. Uh, whether yeah. you supplied narrow strip mill also? Uh, uh, or we, you supply only the funnels? Just I am explaining. Uh, just we are working on this narrow strip mill. Uh, we are uh, doing this in <laughs> our our plant. We are uh, uh, just we are implementing in our plant. This is in Kutz plant. This is in uh, nearby to Gandhidam. We are uh, implementing our own technology in our plant. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Same so, thing. Uh, we are doing this compact stand also in our our steel plant. We are operational it. In near near future, we have added an advantage custard to this compact mill. Means we plan to uh, make a uh, 0.6, 0.7 ton, million ton reckoning one uh, particular one set with this reducing number of stands by increasing reductions. All this we already implementing this in our our uh, mills. Great, great. In okay, fact, okay. Uh, uh, one message to uh, I would say all the players uh, like Daniele, SMS, Prime Metals, Tenova, uh, CMI, everyone in this country. Let us work together. Daneli has already moved a, a great uh, distance, I would say, in this regard. Uh, the the workshop of Daneli in uh, Sri. If you if you tell if you if you tell tell then then I can tell you tell you that Daneli is the first company who exactly. has gone for the Atmanirbhar Bharat for Midani. Midani exactly Bhattani. exactly that is what I was coming to. You know, I feel proud when I. I remember the day I went for the inauguration of City City workshop in yes. uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh. Uh, yes. And that day I felt proud that Mr. Benediti himself, in fact, Mr. Benediti yes, himself yes, had yes. come down for the inauguration. And yes. it is a matter of pride that yes. uh, Daneli took the Atma Nirbhar Bharat initiative from those days and exactly. took it on. Uh, itself to make a world class workshop available. Yes. You know, the workshop in Sri City is no less than the yes. workshop in both Rio or uh, the one in uh, Rayong, Thailand, which I've been to, or for that matter, Shanghai. It can match world class. So, using the world class technology for the benefit of yes. our country is what Daneli had planned right at the beginning. Yes. yes. So, I think yes. Daneli has really made an effort towards this Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative. And similarly, we need many more Danelis uh, uh, to come to India, develop technologies. What our prime minister talks about. Yes. Develop yes, yes. technologies here and develop uh, the capabilities which India can deliver. Uh, if you Even yes. if you go to Bhutriya, you will find so many engineers from Daneli, India, from India, working there in Botrio. So many yes. of them, and they're delivering so wonderful results. So yes, the yes. Indian, I still feel the Indian metallurgists, the Indian engineers are one of the best in the world. Yes, yes, yes. And we can do wonders. Only thing is we need support. We need support of uh, the world's best technologies available and put it up in India. So uh, thank you, thank you, Shantanu. Thank you, Mr. Raut and uh, Mr. Manohar Singh. Uh, everyone, I want to personally thank each and every one who, uh, you know, the initiative uh, was taken for today's webinar primarily because we feel there is much more which is needed to be done to save our energy cost, to make India the lowest cost steel producer in the world to make it a hub for steel making, as our prime minister says. So uh, with that, uh, I would request my son Ankit to propose a vote of thanks. And uh, I thank everyone for uh, making this happen. My special thanks to Daneli for uh, uh, being the sponsor for this event. My thanks to Schaeffler Bearings, who actually were the first ones to come up with the idea of uh, putting this event together. My thanks to Electrotherm, Mr. J.C. Babu, who, uh, who took uh, the, the trouble of uh, you know, joining this event. And then my special thanks also to uh, JSPL and my guru, Mr. V.R. Sharma, who has always stood by me whenever I have requested him. So my special thanks to Mr. V.R. Sharma and entire JSPL collective 
for their efforts. And thanks to all the attendees who took the trouble of listening to us for the last three and a half hours. 3 and 3.30 we started at 7 o'clock. So last three and a half hours, whoever was there, thanks to all of you. Thanks to all those who watched us on YouTube today and also on Zoom. So Ankit, over to you for your vote of thanks. Yeah, sorry, I was muted. Yeah, so you covered most of most of uh, it. So I'll just uh, once again thank our sponsors, our gold sponsor Schaffler, and our seed sponsors Danieli and uh, JSPL. Uh, thanks as well to all the panelists as well as the attendees uh, who joined uh, our meeting today. And uh, last but not the least, to the steel and metallurgy team for uh, working uh, endlessly and making this event possible. So. Uh, Thank you all. And with that, I will conclude today's meeting. Thank you, everyone. And uh, those of you who have uh, noticed, our next physical big event is on the 25th of November in Mumbai at the Bombay Exhibition Center, which is better known as NSC Goregaon, and along with Mitec India. You know, Mitec is the biggest event for the metallurgical industry. And we are holding Mitec India for the first time in India. Uh, a conference for Mitech India, and we look forward to the participation of all technology pro pro providers, all producers, and all uh, stakeholders of this industry to join us on the 25th of November at NSC Goregaon for Mitech India. With that, thank you very much, and see you very soon. This was our 47th, Ankit? Yes, 47th. <laughs> our 47th webinar. So we will finish the webinar series with 50, another three more to go. And then we will move totally to physical events, which we could not hold for the last two and a half years. Thank you very much. And Thank have you. a nice Thank weekend, you. a wonderful Thank weekend you. ahead. All the very best. Good night. See you. Bye. Good night. Bye. Goodbye.